But that's what I mean by looping essentially it comes down to like playing cards where you know everything is and you're going to play it this way and hope the killer doubles back or doesn't double back. And when that becomes the case, playing cards never get sold. I have 8,000 hours. And I just had a game the other day where we won so many 50-50s where I was laughing harder than I literally have in years. And this is 8,000 hours later. But when you flip a coin and you're calling heads over and over and over and over and it comes up heads 50 times in a row, that's one of the funniest things in the entire world. And it'll make me feel like I'm a straight up child again, even though I have 8,000 hours in this game. And that's the reason why it's so much fun to keep looping and why it's, and why it's so relaxing because it's not mechanically challenging at all. Looping is one of the easiest things to do. The hardest thing in Survivor, in my opinion, is the actual teamwork. But once you know how everything works, you're not struggling and trying to learn and feel like I'm out of place and stuff. It literally just feels like you're playing cards and flipping coins. And eventually, you'll have one of those games where flipping the coin came up heads 50 times in a row and you'll be laughing your ass off just as hard as I was. Oh god. I can't fucking go anywhere. Is there anything back here? There's nothing back. Okay, here we go. And now we get out. We're lucky as fuck here. Oh my fucking god. Now I'm looping around basement. <laughs> Oh my god, he got auto-aimed. I didn't actually make that jump in time. He got auto-aimed by the video game. You know how we talk about that happening? But I was outplayed there. Double back. Yes! I'm jumping this one. I medium vaulted? What the fuck? I'm glad that he ran out, but that was ridiculous. Fucking medium vaulted there. Fung gave up on hook, yeah. Get me here? I think he does. Yay! We got the penis. It's blocked now, though. Can you jump it? Yes! I have nowhere to go. What the fuck? All this shit's gone. No oh, fucking. All right, we have the fun bus, <laughs> Leon. <laughs> Don't throw the pallet, Leon. Don't throw it. Yes. Go walk around. I was gonna vault it, but. Jump this one, because we gain the distance. <laughs> yes! <laughs> you double back? No, you didn't. I'm running the wrong way, though. I gotta like fucking turn this thing around. <laughs> I'm gonna try to loop it once and jump the. I was gonna try to jump the window. Jump it.
Oh my god! <laughs> oh no! I think I'm fucked here. Fucking 50 50 possible. <laughs> Wait, what map is this? Yes! This is totally guy. <laughs> if these videos are helping you out at all, make sure you like, subscribe, comment. It helps more than I could ever even tell you. Go follow on Twitch. I'm probably live right now as well. Go follow your boy MLT. I cannot make these looping guys without him. He helps me so much. All right. It's Wrecker's Yard. An actually balanced map for once. It is possible. So Wrecker's Yard is actually just a bunch of common tiles. It's all the common tiles that can spawn on the Auto Haven Wrecker's Realm that you can use with the Azeroth's key and it can take you to one of the five maps. But this one literally just has all common tiles that spawn on all the other maps. You have a killer shack right here in the middle that's always going to have basement because there is not another structure that can spawn basement on the entire map. So if you're thinking there might just be a lot of RNG to this map, that's exactly what this map is like. You're basically just going to be able to keep an eye out for something that you can connect together. And there are different spots on the map where more things are likely for that to happen. Obviously, the killer shack's going to be right here in the middle. And the thing you're going to be looking for most is whatever tile you can connect to the killer shack. Because usually there is something close or at least in the vicinity for you to be able to. But that might not always be the strong sleep on the map you can always find stuff back here as well every now and then to connect because you can just get a gym spawn here you can also have a pallet here so say you could get like a pallet here into a long wall gym right here and then you can connect these two together so this is back here is one of those spots that you'd want to keep an eye out for these cars over here are actually one of the newer tiles those are kind of put there but those are just like one pallet it's a strong pallet but it's also very mind game well if you don't just drop it but basically the first thing you're going to do when you spawn on this map is try to find whichever generator is closest to the shack. It could be inside shack, this time it was inside shack, but basically that is immediately going to spread out the map. There might be other spots where you can have three generators spawn really close together, because there's like that on a lot of maps, just most likely a three gen can be broken by doing the generator in the middle because that will make sure that there's a generator sort of on all sides. There's gonna be one over there, over there, pretty much everywhere. That's why you'd wanna do whichever generator is close enough to the middle. And that's one of the most important things on this map since it's all RNG and all common tiles, which can get you some really, really strong setups and sometimes just be like one setup at a time as we sort of had here as this is connectable as you could have this to the window and back. And whichever way they pushed you around, you could go right back into this as well. But that's basically what you're going to be looking out for. And this setup right here appears to be the very strongest in the entire map. As we would have this into the LT wall over here, and then into this wall over here. So you could use all three of these. Say the killer pushed you around that way for some reason, then you come around here. And then the killer has to think about guarding that wall, say if it's a dredge or something. So they have to try to cut you off between that and that, and then you just come to this one instead. So right here looks like, at first glance, this would be the strongest spot on the entire map. And when you're looking for something that's really strong to loop, you're going to want to look for something that's chainable to a window. Specifically, because if something is, is close enough to a window, number one, it's always going to be there. But number two, you can loop something, whereas even if this pallet didn't exist here, you could still loop this car. And if they pushed you around this way, coming around here, and then you could jump the window. And most of the time, I'd say the strongest setup on the map is going to be in the vicinity of Shack. A lot of times, it's the thing that you would immediately connect to Shack, and you can connect it on all sides. But we'll get to, into that in a second. Before we go over all the looping tiles, there are a few little fundamental things that I want to go over a little bit more, like when to throw pallets, when to greed them, which is basically all the time, getting your pre-runs, just like a lot of little things that I feel like are worth a mention before getting into the common tiles, because a lot of times I, I, I just kind of assume everybody thinks about those things all the time, and then I jump into common tiles and I'm like, wait, I feel like there's a lot of things I could have mentioned, but are just sort of applicable to all tiles and not just common tiles. So I'd rather go over those now. So the first one that I want to start off with would be holding forward. <laughs> 
or holding W. So holding W is very, very useful in a lot of scenarios, specifically like if basement's here and somebody else is in the basement and then you get found and you need to drag the killer away. So you might not run the killer as long as possible, but at that point it'd be a lot more effective to get the killer away from somewhere rather than be in the basement. So especially if somebody's in the basement or just looping the basement in general. And certain killers, you wouldn't even want to loop killer shack on this one anyway, because basement's always going to be down there. But holding W to me is also taking into account pre-running, which I'm not talking about when you're sitting on a gen and the killer comes up. A lot of times people will sort of give their first hit away, but that could be half your chase. So a lot of times you want to sit on the gen until you're assuming the killer could get close. And if I was in shack and I wanted to get away, I would pick the safest checkpoint close by because you don't want to get super far away because you don't want to lose all your distance and then waste all your time getting back to that generator while it's regressing. You kind of want to stay in the area, but at the right checkpoint so that if they go to start your loop, you're already the right distance away. So if that was the case for here, I would have held W to here. And then, then we would have started the whole chaser here because I like initiating Shack chase from the back of Shack personally. But I do think holding W is sort of the same thing as pre-running. And it, you got to think as well how long it would take. I know this is never a scenario like this, but if we started on one side of the map and we're all the way over here and say the killer had to start like 10 seconds after us because that's about like how long it would take him to catch up. We started running and then the killer started running after us now right if all we were doing was holding w he wouldn't hit us yet we'd be like probably getting almost all the way to here before he got one hit might get hit like here and if we get hit here we get our sprint burst which got us even farther away and now say he's about at shack now chasing up to us after our sprint burst and we just got all the way from one side of the map all the way to the other side of the map and then we could even loop this part here. Like we ran out of map. We could have kept running the killer by just holding W. So I know it's boring way to play, but sometimes it is very necessary. And even if you just don't know a map or you don't know where to go or you see nothing, you literally can just hold forward and you can loop or run the killer for like at least 30 seconds and get him to another part of the map. So don't think you always have to loop. Sometimes it is the best idea to go down sooner, but pull him to other side of the map to sort of alleviate the pressure because you needed to pull him anyway, since you have like one survivor down, two injured all the way in that corner, and then you just want to pull him over there. So that would be also the most useful point to be holding W. There's no pallet. <laughs> yes, there is. Yes! That one pallet greed, I would have gotten downed otherwise. All right. Can I make this here? Dang it. Uh, there's an achievement called Power Moose. So I'm the number one. Uh, I can just show you. I don't know how many I have. <laughs> Maybe I will pull it up. I haven't pulled it up in a while. Now I can pre-drop absolutely fucking everything. Damn. Let's hope he take his whip out. To the fun bus. I don't think I make it though. No, the zombie is still fucking here. Open it, open it, open it, open it, open it. Open it, bro, open the door. No. Oh, this pallet's down, no. Body block, body block. Yes! <laughs> Holy shit, Fang is amazing. Yay! Wait. I'll give him away. <laughs> Yay! He let us have hatch. 
Bernard's. Wait, F Sam's. Fucking hate playing against Nurse Student. I know, dude, I can't. It's the only killer I don't like playing against. <laughs> it's like I'm playing fucking Duck Hunt and just waiting for them to mess up. Hey, Ben, though, man. You just been playing DVD? You play the new Pokemon? <clears throat> Pal agreed, oh god. If I was playing male survivor, I would have not gotten hit in there. That's what I thought. What the fuck is this tile? Isn't this? Oh no, it's the wrong way. The window's on that side. <laughs> Boo. I might be able to throw that down actually, but. <laughs> There's another pallet. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Juke the window. Oh god. <laughs> Did kind of work though. Fuck the pallets down. And they're on hook. I can't even go down here either. I'm actually just gonna jump this and hold forward because I have to get away from Shaq. Because that guy's on the hook right there. Damn it! <laughs> but that's a good principle to live, just to live by in general. Dang. I was like, run forward with confidence. My makeup? No, I don't. I misplayed. Run. I only job now is to hold forward and get away from the basement. Make it to the fun bus, maybe. Damn it! I was hoping I could make that. Oh, there's no pallet here. <laughs> I can't run this way. I'm gonna have to take a hit. 
<laughs> Unless we got jukes. Yes! Oh, it's so close. Oh. Dang. You're supposed to swing. There was no pallet there. No, this pallet's down. I wanted to chain those. I was once getting shit talked by someone like that. That was funny. I was trash talking too though. I like trash talking, I think it's fun. No! I knew I was gonna make it. I gotta run it this way. I'm going down though. I'm trying to get away from the basement. I cannot get put in the basement right now. You hit me again here? I ran the wrong way though. I was afraid of getting hit with the uh, whip. Dang it, they didn't swing. <laughs> he even got me with the switch of direction. I take a hit. Yes. I didn't want him to go after, uh, that was a Jonah, right? There's so many shirtless survivors now. It is Jonah. Let's go. Another thing I want to talk about is looping tight because we always talk about looping tight and sometimes you focus too hard on looping tight because you're thinking if I don't loop as absolutely tight as possible I might not make it to the pallet or I might not make it to the window and then you forget to look behind and the killer doubles back so sometimes you're focused a little bit too much on looping tight but for the most part that is a genuine rule that you want to think about is I might make it an extra loop or maybe even two by just looping tight because sometimes especially there's a lot of casual players in DVD so a lot of players will come around even survivors coming around this car will come around like this wide you know they're like looping it like this killers too there are a lot of times killers will be coming around and looping like this so you don't know how many extra loops you can get by just looping tightly and what i mean by looping tightly is you can run at an angle like this we call it stubbing your toe if you run too steep and you lose distance like this but you can run at an angle like this where you're not losing any distance and that also helps you because the very first frame available if you needed to cut in you do immediately cut in that way which makes it easier and less work for you to cut right around to loop as tight as possible. So you always want to be holding into the wall and you want to be doing this to get into habit like everywhere you're running. So even if you're not being chased, but I'm just like running across here, if I'm against the wall, I'm always doing this. Like just to sort of get used to how steep I can run against the wall without doing this and losing distance on the killer, but actually just continuing to run full speed and then cutting around the first possible frame you had to be able to do so. And you can always work on looping tight no matter where you're running. Say the person's hooked around this corner but not right here. Coming around this corner you can practice looping tight, looping tight, and then say there was a hook here and I like unhooked him here. But you can literally be practicing at all times looping tight no matter what you're doing, where you're going, what your objective is. You can always be practicing coming around all your corners as tight as possible. You don't have to be in chase to practice looping tight at all. And now another thing about looping tight and it's more evident obviously against something like a Bubba that has to be careful because they'll bonk, but you have a smaller hitbox than most of the killers do. So when you're looping tight, you're actually faster, not faster than the killer, but if you're if you're 100% speed and the killer is 115, when you're looping super tight, it's really like 113. Like it's really like harder for the killer to catch up to since they're not in third person. So they can't like immediately judge like, hey, I'm coming right around here and I see it coming and I can immediately cut. You have a bigger advantage being in third person and being able to loop tight. The last thing I want to say about looping tight as well is when you are looping on a wall, because a lot of people talk about times where you can look behind, because sometimes you're a little worried that if you turn around and look, you might lose the teeniest little bit of distance and not make the pallet or the window. Because think about it, when you do turn around and look, you're compensating with your other hand or your keyboard, depending on how to not lose distance. So you're like turning around. But you still worry the teeniest little bit that I might not make. It's going to be a very close 50-50 anyway. Those are the times where I get caught not doing it. But that's why looping tight and being against a wall comes comes in handy. Because since you don't have to actually, you're not like out in the open and there's no way to go left or right when you're turning it around. You can sort of rely 
on the wall to allow yourself to turn around easier and you know for a fact you didn't lose any ground doing that when you turn around so a lot of times people will be turning around a lot when they're specifically looping up against something and like if they're going out somewhere towards a window and then look at the window and then turn around and go for the jump but if you're working on turning around in chase and that goes with looping tight i'd say because those are like the two things because that's when it's hard to turn around and look is when you're looping tight i'd say the best time for you to be able to do that is when you're running against a wall since you can sort of compensate you don't have to worry about doing like a full half circle with your other thumbstick or on mouse and keyboard just to be able to do it obviously not a full circle because you don't have to look all the way directly behind but it beats when you're into a wall it beats doing that better than it is doing this you know so that is another thing that you can utilize while looping tight is that is a good way to be able to look behind yourself while in chase is while you're looping tight against a wall and using it to line up one last thing i want to say about looping tight is you want to keep your feet moving while you're looping tight because if you keep your feet moving and gets you avoiding doing one of these big goofy turnarounds which look cool and i used to think they were cool i used to think that was the right thing to do when you get turned around to turn around this way but when you turn around this way you lost distance on the killer so you want to keep your feet moving for two reasons. Number one, to avoid that. So no matter which way they, they cut you in, you'll never actually get turned doing one of these as well. And, and you always want to be never like straight to the side either. Because sometimes like I just did straight to the side. Once I did that, it turned me around. That's why you want to sort of keep your momentum moving and inwards toward whatever tile you are. I never just hold straight to the side because that might happen. But you always want to keep your momentum going and, and avoid the big goofy turnarounds because that could literally be the big difference between you making it to a tile and not. And you really want to be thinking about it most when, when a killer changes directions on a corner because that's the easiest for you to sort of loop back around and go that way. But that specifically is what you want to run towards the tile and to do every time. Because every time you come around and he pushes you around this way, you lost distance and you might not make it back to the tile again specifically if we're going this way don't just go side to side always be walking in now every now and then you're gonna upset a killer they think you're shaking your head at them but it's video games people are gonna get upset at stuff and we don't have to worry about that as long as you're not doing anything that can't get you banned don't worry about it <laughs> might get you tunneled but at the same time there's a lot, you might get tunneled over anything in this game he knows where i'm at Um, hmm. Nice. <clears throat> Now, another thing that is very important if you want to improve on looping specifically is greeting pallets. So greeting pallets allows for two things to happen. Obviously, you want to save some pallets for when you're on death hook because you don't want to run out and all the pallets are gone when you're getting tunneled and, and you're the one on death hook and nobody else has even been hooked. That's when you're obviously going to want some pallets. But greeting pallets allows you, if you're specifically working on looping, specifically helps you go practice that same tile again. So say I wanted to go practice this NO gym right over here, right? As long as I keep greeting this pallet, it is still here. So even if I get downed here, if I'm like, this is my weak tile, I want to work on this tile more, and I get down and I get hooked here, that pallet's still there. So now I can go back to this tile and work on it, like, the entire match, until that pallet is thrown. Once the pallet is thrown, it's just like any other tile, where it turns in... Uh, this one, you can ch chain to the wall, but generally speaking, if it's just like a regular filler tile, once you drop that, it turns into that whole running around and do I jump the pallet or do I not winning the 50 50 or not unless you have something else to be close to it and you have pre-dropped the pallet but we'll get talking about that in a second on when to pre-drop and how to do it but at the same time once that pallet's done even if it's down or it's kicked already we can't practice on looping the tile how it always be so greeting pallets is beneficial not only for the killer respecting and getting extra loops because <laughs> let me tell you killers respect more than I even imagine killers to respect and you can sort of judge yourself on the tile like I would or why I wouldn't throw this pallet here because if you go down then you're like hey I would have thrown that that would have been the right choice and if you don't it's if they respect it again you're like I would have thrown that and it would have been like kind of a waste of a pallet so until you're on death look it's good to greed them anyway and just sort of judge too over and over and there's a few different ways you can greed there's obviously like the running there's the one where you can stop here for a second that's my personal favorite because it feels really funny to get away with doing absolutely nothing even if it's for a half a second where you just stop and then keep going some people come uh, turn around and do one crouch I've seen people do a up if I'm trying to mix it up if I've already done one stop or two stops and it's worked 
then on a third time i'll try to mix it up too if i'm running around and i'll do like a turn towards them because i'm like hey maybe a different body motion will make them respect it even more and there's a bunch of different ways you can play around with it and trust me they do respect it i've been sort of i'm an experiment this year i've only thrown six pallets of this type and none of the pallets were really in chase except for the very first one where i was getting tunneled it was an unsafe pallet and i still lost a 50 50 anyway but if i didn't throw that pallet i was going to go down soon anyway because they were going to have bloodlust and that's exactly what happened i threw it they respected it got bloodlust and i went down anyway so i'm sort of doing that as an experiment just to see exactly how much killers respect because it's like playing cards you're never going to know exactly you can do the exact same thing to the exact same killer like a death slinger but it's two different people playing the death slinger so it's going to go two different ways like the first guy I respected it five times and then the second guy I didn't respect it at all so i kind of want to just uh, eliminate that and just not throw any pallets as often as i could this year so about two and a half months in i've only thrown six pallets and i'm telling you killers respect pallets more than i even expected them to <laughs> but that is mutually beneficial because then if you respect pallets you don't have to drop it to chain it to something because a lot of times somebody will pre-drop a pallet to try to chain it to another tile but if, if you have a pallet like here and they respect it you don't have to pre-drop it to chain it to another tile because that's the reason people would pre-drop pallets especially if it's an unsafe one to make it the length of the distance from the tile and then they can change to something else and that's why i recommend you wait till you're on death look to be able to do that and the other times because the other times you can might be able to chain it from the same respect just without even throwing the pallet and then it's still there in case somebody else is getting tunneled so i usually tell people to if you're working on looping specifically, try to not throw any pallets to try and deathhook. And if you really want to have some fun, don't throw any pallets at all. Unless somebody else's life depends on it in the lobby, or the lobby depends on your life depending on it. If you're getting tunneled and you want to spend as much time as possible and not just go down because I didn't want to throw the pallet, that's time to throw the pallet too. But a lot of times, greeting the pallet is just better for everybody in the lobby. It's better for yourself getting better at it. You get more chances at the tile if it's something you want to work at. And it's a lot of fun. That's my favorite thing in this entire game, personally. I know this is a bias. It's not fact here, but greeting pallets is literally my favorite thing in the entire game. If it didn't work anywhere near as often as it did, I would be a killer main. So now that we've talked about greeting pallets, I think it's time to talk about pre-dropping pallets and how to do it. Because I always talk about when to throw pallets, but I don't want to talk about why pre-dropping is a good idea. Because everyone talks about, oh, they're just going to go pre-drop this. And it is not the best idea if you use the pre-drop just to then loop this tile. That's not how you should use a pre-drop. Say I am on death look and I'm getting chased by this. And this is a pretty strong tile by itself. But say I wanted to pre-drop it there. If the killer decides to try to game this tile, you don't think about it as like just this tile. You have to think about this tile now as once I'm about here, or actually be like more about here, right? If I'm here, the killer is maximum distance from the tile. You don't have to think about it as like half and half because you're thinking about it as half and half if you're playing it this way where you do the whole 50-50 and do I jump it or do I not? Like it turns into every single other tile like that. Every other tile in the game is like that if you play it that way. That's why I think throwing tiles is a bad idea or throwing pallets is a bad idea if you're trying to get better at looping. You have to think about it like I pre-drop that and once I'm on the other side of this, that's why you have to pre-drop it and not be like throwing the pallet and when they're gaining distance and going around, that's why you're like ahead of the killer and pre-drop it because now it's the full length of this tile and not just like the full length of the car, it's the full length of two cars. When I'm standing on the opposite side of this pallet, the killer is the distance from the corner of this car all the way to the corner of this car. And that is easily enough distance for me to make it back to this tile. And I could pre-drop this one too if I wanted to, right? You could pre-drop this one, same thing. If I pre-drop this one and he was trying to game it, now I'm like this whole distance away from it. And if he's coming over this way and he really wants to have his game that, then he could go back to this tile again. And now we're this whole distance. And if you're this whole distance, that whole distance, you can make all the way, not obviously from this angle, but you could even fake this here and make it somewhere else. So you really, that's the reason people will pre-drop. You don't want to pre-drop when you're like not in danger or anything because you can get way more value, like even more value than you could without pre-dropping because they could just drop the pallet. So you really just want to wait for that until you're on death hook. But that is where the value of pre-dropping is. Obviously, killers work differently. And that's why I try to get as many different examples as I possibly can. So I could be like, what do you do against Huntress? You know, it's like, well, then you greet the pallet, <laughs> you know, or stuff like that, or find a different tile or something like that. But but that would generally be why, especially in comp, why they pre-drop. It's not like they pre-drop and then they're just going to loop this thing by itself. They pre-drop because if they did have an unsafe pallet when you pre-drop it it makes the actual length of that pallet itself much longer so say this one too say this was a more unsafe pallet and i just chucked it when the killer was coming over and that's why they like wait there because if, if i chuck this this pallet and then i just started running then the killer would just walk around and it didn't even give me that much distance that's why when they pre-drop they wait at the pallet and to see what the killer is doing because if you're at the pallet the killer is the maximum distance possible away from you and then you can play whichever way the killer goes and when the killer gets to the other tip of the tile that's when you can leave and go to either safer tile like if you're going to try to get to main building that's why you'd end up pre-dropping something and then using the distance of the pre-drop tile to make it to the main building stuff like that i know i don't talk about it much because it's a lot more fun especially with unsafe pallets because unsafe pallets they respect over and over and over and it's way more fun to 
try to get the stun. But if you are on death like it is a really good idea to sort of think about that. And then you can think of like we call them O penises, but very broken setups will become broken setups by pre-dropping something, especially if it's a pallet that the killer looks like they wouldn't want to break because they're like, that's an unsafe pallet. But then it turns this whole setup into a strong thing if it did. Like say this went right into a window. Now this is way stronger, especially if this was facing the other way. Because you could jump the window and if they hadn't break in the pallet, then you break, then you jump in the pallet, and then you can loop the pallet enough times this whole length of this tile, like over and over. Like if they were on the other side of this, we could loot. And you're even bonus if the killer thinks they're gonna double back and they did it again, then you still don't have to leave. And then say we looped it again, and then we loop it again one last time, and say the killer was caught up to us. That's when you'd switch to the last tile. And you're like, okay, killer's a little bit too close this time, and that's when you would say the window to Shack was right here. That's when you go to this one, or you come to Shack and pre-drop Shack, you know, or do something like that. But that's why pre-drops are useful. It's just that's exactly why you want to save them for when you're on death look, especially if you're getting tunneled. <laughs> oh my God, you're a hero, Jake. I'll return the favor. No. No, I'm not going to make it to Jake. Now I will. No, Jake. No. No! It's right there! No! No! Run that way. Yeah! No! If I wasn't hindered, I would have made that. Cool. That'd be amazing. That was weird. Oh, good shit. Oh, God. Didn't help. <sighs> hmm. He has the bloodlust of a fucking mate. No, he doesn't. He went the other way. I thought he was gonna bloodlust me. Now I can pre-drop absolutely fucking everything. Damn. Let's hope he take his whip out. To the fun bus! I don't think I make it though. No! The zombie is still fucking here. Open it! Open it! Open it! Open it! Open it! Open it! Bro! Open the door! No! All right, now that we got most of the fundamentals out of the way, and you could always have some more fundamentals to sort of talk about, but I feel like I could make some shorter videos talking about those. But now that we got most of those fundamentals out of the way, let's get in to looping all the common tiles that spawn on Auto Haven Wreckers and their respective versions of the common tiles since they're slightly different on different maps. So this is a simple pallet gym, or if you're in the comp scene, they call it a seawall. This, the Auto Haven Wreckers Realm, is the exact reason I call it a simple pallet gym instead of a seawall. Because on Auto Haven Wreckers, there is no seawall. So if you're trying to tell somebody that's new to the game, the seawall, how are they going to identify that this was as, Z, as a seawall? So the Auto Haven Wreckers version of simple pallet gyms slash seawalls are the reason I call them simple pallet gyms. They're also my favorite version of the simple pallet gyms. I think they're more safe than the other ones because the other simple pallet gyms, you had to wait here as far as you could. But waiting here is dangerous since it's a shorter tile than it is on the other maps. 
But because of it being shorter and narrower and not having the sea coming out this way, that's why they allow you a better checkpoint. So you can stand at this checkpoint here. And it's really funny standing at this checkpoint because a lot of times you'll see a killer go side to side waiting to see which way you can go. But then they don't see you, so they just end up going side to side and you're just standing there, which is really funny. And that also does make it dangerous on simple pallet gyms to use this as a tile to break line of sight and then just leave and let the mind game themselves. Whichever way you're running. If you're running this way, you could come in this way. And then the second you see them go in to mind game themselves, you could hold forward and get to another tile that you might like better if you're coming this way same thing this is a really unsafe tile this way a lot of times if the killer are chasing you this way they'll see you start going in and once they see you go in they may even try something like put the red stain in here moonwalk and then pre-swing in here but that's why you come in here break line of sight once you see them go then you leave they go in, they pre-swing, and before they know it, you're off to main or shack. In this case, is the main building of this map. You still want to use these checkpoints on the side, however, because you wait here and you wait for them to sort of come around here. And you want to be moving. You always want to keep your feet moving because that way they won't, not that big side to side, but like at least just a little bit. So that way your momentum is going and you can cut around the corner whichever way. And when you cut around the corner, there are little holes in the tire that you can use to see there. But if you go to the point where you can see the holes in the tire, I think it's a little unreliable because you cannot have seen them and they could have just moonwalked back in that way. So usually I just use this right here as a checkpoint until they get to here and then if you don't see them come around the corner that's when you come back around this way you have to wait a little bit because obviously they're going to push around so you do have to wait a little bit because they might try to mind game and you're going to end up most of your movement's going to be here if you really just want to loop this tile and then you can get the this is a safe tile to have a pre-drop as well to be fair if you're just standing here because you don't have to jump until the killer is like about here-ish i'd say because they have to swing all the way around and then into this pallet because this is not the edge of the pallet is like not right there so you really don't have to worry about it now it's hard not to especially on this side because they'll sort of fake you out and then come back in this way but i promise you it is safe enough it's more safe on the other maps but even on this map this is an unmind gameable tile as long as you're doing that and you're patient it's hard to be patient as i said but it is unmind gameable, trust me. <laughs> One last thing I wanna talk about with simple pallet gyms is these walls can be necessary. Not all the time, and I don't wanna, you definitely don't wanna be like, this is the right way to loop this and then cut into the pallet. Like that is a funny way to loop it and you could do that if you want. But a lot of times you'd wanna use this wall for either breaking line of sight, something like a Huntress or you know, a Billy maybe even if they're like gonna out chainsaw before you get to there. And that's when you'd use something like this. If the killer had you out positioned and you weren't gonna make the pallet, say I was running right here and the killer was on that side, they were gonna make it to that pallet before I would, that's when you would stay here and sort of use this as a checkpoint. Cause then you can loop this thing, not like once or twice or anything, but you can force the killer to loop around this object. And no matter which way they will, you're gonna make it back. Now you have to be a little bit worried because if they're expecting that, a lot of times killers won't expect that cause a lot of survivors won't play that way, but you will run every now and then to a killer expecting that. So if you see the killer come around this corner, you don't just like forget about looking back and then hope you make it cause the killer might double back. But every now and then the killer has you out positioned and, I, and we're running this way and the killer would make it before. And that's when you can use something like this to get to the pallet or same if you were doing this one. If I was, if we were coming and this was the only tile and we were coming from this way, same thing. If the killer had his out position, then you could loop around this thing and use this to be the difference to get yourself in position to be able to make it to the tile. So simple pallet gyms are very easy to identify as well. There's not going to be anything on the left side over there, but once you just see this big dumpster right here with, with the tires piled up on top of it, that's when you know you're going to have just one pallet right here and there's going to be nothing else here. Coming from this angle, you can identify it by the short wall this little side right here specifically same thing it's kind of open you know it's not an lt wall because you see nothing on that side if you're coming from this side it's a very easy way to identify because you can just see that there's the wall and the pallet right in the middle and same thing if you're coming from this side you can just see the one pallet right in the middle and that's kind of just a dead giveaway we just go read this for fun does he try to mind game it though you get me? Ah! I like how I said like I, I like how I said how, how like how like I can't fuck around like I I am I I out here doing fucking shows. I kind of fucked. <laughs> You can stand here, right? Can I see him here, though? Oh! I should have thrown it.
Greet it. God damn it. I almost died because I almost stayed still on the pallet. Greet it again. <laughs> I should have thrown it. Are you ready for some tight loops? I'll probably blow it. I want you to hit me with your saw. Yeah. So you gotta hit me with your saw. Oh god. No, oh, naughty bubba. I'm sorry, Fang. I did not mean to. Of the matches I play, I would have gotten no unbreakable value. This is a follow, mate. Damn it. I wanted her to try to infect me. It's too close to... Let's go. Oh, good shit. She got me here. No! I'm not warm yet. What am I doing? What's going on? I had to juke this. Damn. I should have juked beforehand, but I didn't think that was going to work. Damn it, I wanted her to go for a hatchet. That was terrible. I don't want to take that much pressure, though. <laughs> I don't want to give her a free down. It's too early in the game for that. I'm going to give her a free down by just looping bad. Read the pallet. Ha <laughs> ha! Hold forward. Fuck. Oh, he didn't respect it. No! <laughs> Um, Charmander was trying to sue Velveeta, dang. Yes. Because the whole W. I'm gonna run the short side. Go for it. No, she still goes for M1. God damn it. That was always a good time. That's not even a pallet here. What the fuck? I'm suing. Good shit, Ada. Good shit. Greet it. Yup. Greet it. Oh shit. God damn it. <laughs> oh god. I've escaped with on Steve. There's actually like a leaderboard, but I always feel like bragging when I'm pulling that shit up. Damn good shit. All right, number two. Here's the LT waltz on every single map. It is a very common tile. Now LT walls on these maps are not quite as short as they are on the cold wind farm maps but they're still a lot shorter particularly the t part of the walls here these are very short compared to a lot of lt walls on other maps specifically so because of that i actually think it's easier to get some greed off on this one and mostly just to have some sort of plan to not be thinking too hard and chase and then just have little things to react to usually when i'm running up to an lt wall say i was coming up this way i find the l first since the l is the bigger wall i loop the l once and then whichever way he pushes me around, then I go to the T. 
once you go to the T, you just want to loop the T. Now, this one is interesting because you can see through here, but it's very, very hard to. And if you stayed here too long looking, waiting for him to like cross back and forth, you can see it here, but it's hard to get your camera right in the right place at the right time and you might spend too much time trying to get your camera there and get hit anyway specifically with how short these walls are so usually what i just do is i come to about here and then i wait to see if they're coming around the corner and that's when i come here and then since they are short walls you can see if they double backed here so you can come back around this way that's why i was like the slits in the walls do help little bits even that one over there you can use this one too but if you're waiting here they could push around from there and it's a very short wall so you might not make it so usually what i just do with these is loop the one l and then once we got one loop around the l we come to the t because with the T, you can just loop it over and over since both sides are sort of the way it works. And if it double backs once, you can jump back to the L. So if I went this way and he double backed, then you can just jump the L. And then we're started over. And we're just going around this way. If the killer decides to push around this way and around that way, they're allowing you to just loop it essentially to the blocks and they push around this way. This would be ideal. <laughs> but killers don't do this often. And they push around that way. And then you jump this. And they go around the long way. Because that would be the ideal way to loop an LT wall. But killers are always going to try stuff. LT wall more than any other. More than any other tile probably in the entire game. Killers are going to try some mind games. So you got to try to leave yourself vulnerable to as little as possible. And that's why I usually leave myself most vulnerable only in this one spot. Here is the one spot where a killer can really hit me with it. And you can see them through the wall like I said. So it helps a little bit on this one. But right here, you don't want to get stuck here, so you want to keep moving when you come around here. Every now and then the killer has double backed where I was waiting at my tile right here. Just right here, and then the killer walks to right here. They like right about here, and that makes me panic run from here. And then I come around the corner, and then I get around the corner here, and then they're all of a sudden right there because they just came around the corner. That's the one big spot I choose to leave open and eliminate some of the other spots. That's why I just like looping the this one instead of this because if you're looping not just this one and you're looping other ones, you never want to get caught in the scenario of this right here where you're going to try to either fake this or medium vault where none of those are really a good option. Hope the killer swings and misses or hope the killer doesn't double back and get you caught up in doing medium vaults like this on a very small tile. So that's usually why I choose to loop it how I do where you loop one L and then you come over to the T because that minimizes what the killer can do and it sort of just leaves one possible mind game open for you to be vulnerable to. Other than that, you're just waiting for the killer to mind game themselves and then you can start off to square one. And that's why I loop, like looping LT walls that way if they're not connected to something else. So you identify the LT walls by obviously having two windows, but that's different than the double windows because the windows are literally facing different directions. Those windows are perpendicular to each other. These are parallel. And this one's pretty simple from all places because... If you see this, that's why they call it the L, because it's a capital L if you look at it from above, that part over there, and this part right here, and you can see it from this way, the same thing, L and T. That's why it's an LT wall as well, and it's not a TL wall, which a lot of people will call it, because a TL wall is literally a different formation. A TL wall would have the T this way, and then the L would be facing this way out. So I know a lot of people say TL walls, but by definition, looking at this thing is an LT wall. And even if you flipped it the other way, and there's nothing wrong. Like if you call it TL wall, everyone knows what you're talking about. I just always thought it was funny that people would say that. But even if you flipped it upside down, it doesn't make it an LT wall. That would make it like a upside down cross seven or something. <laughs> you know, so it is an LT wall as opposed to the TL wall. And you can always identify it by that. I suppose this would be like the only semi-tough way to identify it. But you'd be able to identify it because there's nothing else that has this big space in the middle. So even if you're running on either side, you'd have a fast ball that way. Or if you're running and I misidentified it and you came this way, you would still have a fastball either that way or a fastball that way. Pretty much no way you can go wrong identifying this one since it's, even though it's an unsafe tile for the most part, it's sort of loopable from approaching from any angle. <laughs> Let me take like another two steps somehow. Damn it. Oh, nice. That's what I was afraid of. Yay! I fucked up though. The fuck? They left! <laughs> Interesting.
Oh god. Damn it. <laughs> He's patient. <laughs> I should have thrown that crap down. Juke the window, juke the window, juke the really big window. And I'll juke it every time now, cause it worked once and I'm gone. I think she has to leave and I have to get hatch, right? Unless she goes after her. And somebody saw it, I really appreciate it. I can't get to that yet though. He did it! Fuck! I thought for sure, and I didn't stay at my checkpoint as long as I thought. He said shh. No, I said, oh god, it's blight. Oh god. With the gross stuff that makes me gooey. This is what I chose. I'm gonna try to loop these together. Oh shit! Thank you, Dwight. I appreciate it. Are you gonna hit me with the M2 here? <laughs> Let's go. I was really worried there for a second. Right there, which is nice. Oh, fuck. I gotta run it this way. Good shit, she can see me on this. Well, that was bad luck. <laughs> From Rotten Fields to Wrecker's Yard. <laughs> So here we have a short wall or a PW gym. I call them PWs, the comp players call them short wall because this wall over here used to be like the shortest wall of the jungle gyms, but now double windows are much shorter. And that's why I ended up calling these PWs because it's a pallet and a window gym. Now this one has more checkpoints like this because you can actually see through this and it would be easier for you to get to here and then just jump this if the killer's coming around. But usually how I like to loop these is looping the pallet by itself and then using this window as like a bailout where if you don't see the killer either direction you just jump and then come this way or same thing you could jump and if they push you around you could obviously come around this way but i like using the pallet to sort of turn it around because if you're coming around this you don't want to jump this and play this 50 50. you would immediately just come around here and either come around this way or if you're getting pushed around this way you would just come back to this thing and that's why i like looping the pallet instead and using the window because if you're pushing this way and I just jump this pallet right here, or this window right here. They could expect that and go right around that way. And this is a really short wall to be playing this, like, double vault game. So if I jump around this way, I might not make it all the way back to the pallet. That's why I usually just like the pallet. And if I don't see the killer pushing around that way, then I just jump this. Because if, if I hadn't seen him yet coming around the corner, then this is too long. And we can push around this way. Another 50-50 you want to be careful of. You can avoid it more on this map, because if you tilt your camera down, you can see over these walls a bit. But another 50-50 that you want to be careful of is when you're pushing around this way. Because you come this way, you want to see them coming around. And then you can push around this way. But the killer can act like they're coming around this way. And then moonwalk all the way backwards and then beat you here. And that is another mind game that I'm usually trying to eliminate. 
by looping just the pallet instead. And then when you don't see the killer, so if I was running this way and I didn't see the killer, that means the killer was going that way. That's why I would jump it this way because if he comes around this way, I'm going to make it back to the pallet most of the time. Not all the time, especially if it's bloodlust. But same if I'm coming this way. If I'm coming this way and I don't see the killer, then then they'd be coming around that way and we're in like the same exact scenario now sometimes if the killer is close and you see them over here and you're not going to make it around you can use this as a 50 50 and they can double back a little bit and then you might still make it right back to the pallet but for the most part just eliminating some of the mind games is why i like looping the pallet and you can stop here for your checkpoint but this checkpoint is a little bit dangerous like i said normally that's why you would just stop here instead No! Oh, nice. That was lucky. I'm not into you like that, spirit. Why can't you just stay in the friend zone? Ah! Oh, boo. I got the fucking not running vault. I'm bad. Dang it. I can't run that way because the guy. I was giving up on Hulk. I could have ran that way. Boo! Dang, he didn't swing. What a meanie face. He should have swung. He doesn't got bamboozler. No. Uh, extra add on. I'm fucked, by the way. Yes. Damn it. Oh my god. You can't see him over it. That's so sedge. Yard. <laughs> it's not the best luck you could have. Dang it. <laughs> I wanted that to work -y. So this is the long wall gym. This is definitely one of the better of the gyms and the main culprit if you're looking to O penises. Just look at this right here. Like speak of the devil, look at this. Where you're like looping this car right into this and this window is so long. <laughs> You don't even have to play this pallet. This window right here is just so long that, like, no matter which way you go, you're going to make it right back to this <laughs> and be able to greed this again. And even if you came around this way, the length of that car by itself, if they are on the other side, we'd probably still be able to make, we could even loop the far car. But that's because this wall is so long that it makes it hard. If the killer, a lot of times on this wall, because of that, when you jump the window, a lot, you got to be aware of the killer will do one of these things where they walk to the side and then come right back and, and start vaulting through. So be aware. If you see the killer go around one way i would keep my distance around running around this way not like super far because you don't want to get caught out here but just for a little bit because if you if it comes around this way you want to be able to go that way but if you don't want to get caught right here and that's why you want some distance because they can hit you through and if they did vault you'd still want to be able to make it at least to here which you would no matter which way and that's what makes long walls so dangerous now if you want to loop the one long wall by itself obviously 
in my opinion, same thing as, as the, the P-dubs or the short walls. You get that extra checkpoint right here that you can see through. But I like to just be running this way, and if I don't see the killer, then I can jump. Because even if you do see the killer, he's coming around, you might be able to make it back to this one. The only time you don't want to jump is if you're running this way, and you see the killer coming right there. If you see the killer right here, then we're sort of going to be running the exact same direction. That's when you'd want to juke it and come this way. Because if you juke and come this way, and, and they came... And uh, even if they pushed and they just double back for half a second wish, you'd get some more distance anyway that you'd be able to make it to that tile. Or loop around this thing, maybe they vaulted there, even if they vaulted there, you'd still be able to make it to this, to either greed or throw or do something about it. So usually, same if I'm running this way. If I'm running this way and I don't see the killer that, that's like an easy choice for me. Because if I'm running this way and the killer expects me to come around here, and that's why I like looping the pallet as well. Because then they don't, ex then they're thinking about the pallet by itself instead of the window. So if you're coming this way, you do have to be careful of this right here. But if they're pushing you this way and I don't see the killer right there, that is the easiest choice in the world for me to vault. Because that means the killer just backed up that way and they're going to try to cut us around before we get to the pallet. And then we just basically doubled our, our distance by doing that. So that's usually why I like looping the pallet by itself and then using the window as a scenario. Because especially with these, these are always connectable to like anything. Even if you just had this truck with no pallet here, you could loop this and then do this. Or even if you push this way, you'd be looping it tight like the killer was going to get you. And then you can cut in right there. Same thing, and you'd make it to the pallet. <laughs> That's how strong long wheel gyms are. I think they're the strongest of the common gyms. And they're pretty easy to identify as well. They look pretty much just like short wall gyms, except short wall gyms would have the pallet right here. And the window would be right there instead. Obviously, we have the window here. Coming from this way, you'd be able to tell because there's no pallet right there. And without seeing a pallet right there, then you know there's not going to be a window here. Because if you're coming from there and there's a pallet there, then you can have a window. You could jump right here. But the fact that we see no pallet there means the window is gonna the window's gonna be there and the pallet's gonna be over there. If you're coming from this direction is the direction you can't really tell too much from. But with if you're coming from this direction anyway, I personally would run this way because you're either gonna have the pallet or the window. And even if it was a simple or even if it was a pallet window gym, you're coming this way. You either have the window there to either get a 50-50 on, or you'd be running towards the pallet that would be right there anyway. If you're coming from this side, it's pretty easy to tell as well, just because. No pallet, which means you're going to know there's going to be the pallet there. It's in the shape of a PW or a long wall, and there's no pallet here. It means it's going to be there. And from this side, it's the longest, safest wall. This is one of the only ones where no doubt you look at it and you're like, that's a long wall. I don't even have to look on the other side of it. You just see how long this wall is, and you're like, that's a long wall, Jim. And if I was running from this direction, I'd run to the pallet. If I was running from this direction, I'd run right to the window, obviously, and then try to go to the pallet or go side to side if I had anything to connect it with. If I was running from this side, same thing. I would run this way to the pallet. Same with PWs. If I was running this way, I would run right in here and try to jump this window. And if you were running this way, as we said, you'd want to cut in this way. If you can take something away from Nemi's early game, that is fucking amazing. I'm fucked here. <laughs> I'm gonna go in the basement. This is bad, but. Oh shit. He's going M2 only. What a fucking champ. Funny when I die. Is 
Is that bamboozle? It is! I have no pallet here though. I do. Damn it. But also having him be able to see me. No, he found her. Here we go. I can't fucking see him. I want to connect this, but the problem is you're not going to be able to see him. Here we go. No, I couldn't juke it in time. <laughs> Is the pallet still here? It is nice. Question is, can I loop this together? We shall try. Oh, boo! So this one's a lane gym. It's like all the other ones. It's like the Ormond gym and, and the new Ormond gym in terms of how you loop it. The thing is with lane gyms is you can get different RNGs. Now this one I actually think is the best RNG with the lane gym because this makes this pallet the most safe. Not if you're trying to like connect it to the window, specifically this because we got like nothing in this whole area. But this pallet specifically, especially if you had dropped it, is not a bad pre-drop because you can run around this way. You can greet it too, but and greeting it works the same way. The only thing with greeting it is you'd have to wait for them to get to there to mind game it for them to go around that wall which is big enough and you can make it all the way back around and either make it to the window or make it back to that pallet but at the same time this is not a bad pre-drop once you have the big long wall here because you can just keep running the distance of this it's obviously they're either gonna have to bloodlust it or break the pallet because it's not gonna block if you jump the pallet three times that's what it's there for so when you get the one long wall on the edge, I think that's the safest version of the pallet on the lane gym. But that's still being said, a lot of times I like if I'm coming from any direction besides directly from this side. Because if you're coming directly from this side, that's when, yes, you can use this right as it is. But if you're coming from any other side, it's going to get a little bit sketch. Because even if we come around this way, the killer can just walk around here and then they cut in, which doesn't really help us as much. Because if we come around here, they have to go all the way around the outside and then keep going around the outside and then keep coming in. Whereas if we jump this and they're coming from right here, they just cut right around and they can get us before we go right back in. So this is really only worth the pre-drop if you're coming from this one specific uh, side. Other than that, you're going to use it as normal. You can even use it as a way to break line of sight. If we were coming from this way, you cut in, break line of sight, and then... And then use it, you could use it to break line of sight and then get around this way. There's also a little checkpoint here in the middle where you can see through that to help you if the killer wants to try to mind game you. And then you can, so you can use it as ways to turn it around and then turn it into that. But you're not always guaranteed the long wall. And if you have stuff that's not the long wall, then you're want, gonna want to play the pallet the way we did the NO gyms and the O gyms and then connect it to the window. So connect it to the window, if they pushed us around that way, you'd run up in here. And then you could play the pallet again. Since it's the long wall, if we played the pallet, we'd come run, run around this way. Then we could come this way, and then they push us in. Then we could play this. And even if they went around that way ready for it, then we're right up here at the pallet again. And the other thing is if they push us the other way, you're right to the pallet too. So if they push us this way, especially with this wall, this wall would be even better. Because then we're back into the exact same thing we are in before, where we could just do this and go around the long way. Or if you had more distance where you jumped around, and once you jumped around, you could come around this way. And do the same thing. You could either come straight here and jump, or less distance, sorry, not more distance, because I took the long way around. But if he pushed you around this way and they had gotten a little bit closer on the mind game, you'd run straight through here and either go to this, or you go through straight through here. And if you had a little bit extra space, you go this way, get them to try to mind game themselves and do something else, or just get them to mind themselves and walk around this way as well. There's not really a set in stone answer with lane gym, specifically with the pallet, because killers will play that pallet over and over a completely different ways from every other killer. Obviously there's a limited amount of plays they can make, but you'll just never know what play the killer is going to make, and that's why most of the time I'd leave the pallet up unless you have this long wall running from the one specific direction. Let them game themselves and then use the window instead, and then use the window as means to make it back to the pallet and back and forth. To identify the lane gym, it's this very simple, because it's just three lanes and four rows of walls. One, two, three, and four, and the walls can move around, as I said. So you can have the big long wall right here with no break in it can be right here. This window right here can also be on this lane as well. But the window will always be on this lane or this lane. It will never be 
here or here. This is always going to be the pallet right over here. It's just like the broken walls will be different. So sometimes that's why I was saying you'll have like broken wall and broken wall. And this pallet is extremely unsafe in that scenario. But then you'll have something else that's longer that makes it a little bit better. But I kind of think it's more unsafe when you have the long window here because you can't actually get into that window easily. You have to go very far out of your way to sort of make it. But most of the time, you aren't going to get a long window here anyway, especially, I don't really think it's possible on Auto Haven Wreckers, but it is possible on other lane gyms on other maps. Coming from this side it, as well, you can see it pretty easily, where you just see one, two, three, and four. You can see all your lanes. The hardest to identify it, I would say, would be coming from this side specifically, because if you're running around, you don't know if it's going to be the window or it's going to be the pallet. But either way, if you don't know which is which, go to the left because the pallet is never going to be on the right. So even if you went to the left, you still had means to make it to the window anyway. And if it was the pallet, it would be on the left side anyway. And then seeing it from here, you could confuse this maybe with a long wall gym, but not once you saw any lanes through the middle. So by the time you would end up actually jumping the window, it would be very obvious that you're at a lane gym and that the pallet would be right on this corner. One more thing you can do with this particular variant when you have the broken walls, this works on other maps as well. If you have these broken walls in this position as well, it also works. And that would work better because you could run both directions. But say you were coming from here, and the killer respected it and you're pushing around to the pallet like you were just going to do. Another simple thing you can do is run around this way, around to this wall. You can't see it over, so if you don't see them coming, it's best to cut towards the pallet. But if you run around this way and you even see the red stain there, you can jump this again. Because even if they double backed around this way, you'd make be able to make it right back to the pallet. And if they double around this way, you'd literally be able to just vault it again. You could do this like two or three times if you wanted to make it really simple. But it only works with this particular one or one that has the broken wall in front of the window. See, if you pushed around that way, we could just do this again and push right into it again. Now, it doesn't work on this side, obviously, because running around this isn't going to be as big a line of sight breaker, and it's also much smaller. So if I'm cutting in this, the killer could dull back here and get me before I even got into this vault. You really need a wall like this. These two work as well, because when you have something like this covering the window, you can run either direction, because that way, if one of those broken walls was over this way, and we pushed around this way, we could run this way, cut back around, and then jump back to the window again. Because the thing that makes this work is when you run this way, the killer isn't going to, a lot of times, the killer won't risk pushing through here because they didn't see you there. They're going to try to come around here and see which way you went. And the second they're even on that side of the window, you can make this jump. Because from here, they're going to be all the way over here, essentially doubling back. And that is far enough for you to make it easily around to the pallet. But if you have the right RNG, you could run back around this window and do the same thing that you just did. Not with that one. Those tires will not work. It's just imagine that this would be a safer wall and you could just run around and do it this way. Because it would force the killer in a scenario to try to mind game you by pushing you through here which you would see if you were looking backwards, because if you come around this way and you're looking backwards and you don't see them, that's when you just cut towards the pallet. But it makes it a safer vault as well, because if you're trying to vault this from in here, you can get the running vault, but it's almost impossible. It is like the most difficult running vault. And it's not possible on all of the lane gyms either, so I just always assume I can't get the running vault anyway, because it is it is very difficult as well. So instead of running through here and risking this medium vault back and forth action where the killer can just double back, that's why you shove the wall in the way run around this way and you're still essentially taking the same pathing you're just using that big barrier as something to strengthen this window right here because same thing if you had nothing right here all you can really do is go a little bit out of your way to try to get the running vault but if you had that wall right there you could run around get on this side of the wall and then cut right back towards the window but it only works on the variations where the window is on the outside wall and you have broken two bro well you can do it with one broken wall but it works best when you have two broken walls because if you have one broken wall and you come around this way and you did it do like the running ball and it was one of the ones that went all the way out there you can still do it you just it would just be a longer circle you'd have to run all the way around because it would be like out to here and then do the, the pathing again which would still work it would just allow us for more counterplay and it allows for more mistakes that can possibly be made since it's a slightly more difficult running vault. But that is one more thing you can do on lane gyms if you don't want to think too hard. If you just want to have some sort of, I'm going to try to loop it this way, then you can totally just run this way and then run this way and run around and do it again until the killer catches on. And when the killer catches on, you push to the pallet. Package was miss... Um... Re representing how long it actually takes to cook. She wanted five million dollars. That's the other thing too. Class, class action lawsuits are usually more money than that. Oh my god, I actually got value out of that fucking tile. Would you look at that? It does happen. Oh, he's got the. This is bad.
Protect me tires. Fuck. She's gonna get a hit on me here. <laughs> no, she's not. Let's go. Alright, well, that didn't work. Lucky here. To, cro to quote Keegan Key when he was on Hot Ones, I'm not a fucking pussy. <laughs> did that fake work? It did not. Dang, it didn't work. Did he double back here? No, he didn't. Interesting. Man, game yourself, please. Yay! Damn, I thought that was actually a pal there. I'm kind of fucked here. Like, which way is he coming from? <laughs> yes, there is. Yes! That one pal agreed. I would have gotten downed otherwise. Alright. Oh, boo. Where's another one? Yay! Run around the back. Run to this one, actually. Oh my god, I got the reverse slam. That's hilarious. Got her! <laughs> Too afraid to fucking jump through anything. He's got traps. Oh, fuck. This is a terrible tile against Huntress. Do ah! I should have altered that. It's down already, boo! Can I make this one get basemented? Because I'm. I don't know if I made it far enough. I did. Just barely. Fuck, there's nothing there though. Bitch. Oh goddamn, I'm a dumbass. So here we have the Ormond Gym. So the Ormond Gym also loops a bit similarly to Lane Gyms with the added fun of this little wall right here in the middle. I can give you some fun. This wall is more safe on the other variants of 
the Orman gyms on the other maps specifically because it's a longer wall. But this one still, you can have a lot of fun looping this one anyway, especially if it's a taller killer because there is no wrong way for essentially for them to push you. But really what you'd want to do is the same thing where you come in here, you'd greed the pallet, see what happens. And then if the killer didn't come around there, you jump this window, wait to see which way they push you. Whichever way they do push you, come around this way. Make sure you wait to see if they're going through the middle. If they don't, they come around this way. Also, when you go side by side over these windows, I don't want to talk about much, but you don't want to loop as tight as you can right here because the killer can hit you through there. So that's why a lot of times when you see you going, you like do this sort of rainbow thing. That's when you'd want to do this. When I talk about trying to avoid doing this big goofy turnaround, that's like the perfect time to do a big goofy turnaround. It's because you're sort of trying to avoid getting, having the killer bait you into that where they would act like they're gonna do and they push the side then they come in and swing right when you're getting pushed back in you also are trying to be aware of the vault so when you're coming this way and they come that way you got to be aware that they're gonna try to push you into a vault and you got to wait for that so you got to wait for your checkpoint wait for them to come around the corner and that's where this thing right here becomes fun because this is right in the middle you can even get a running vault on this window here if you play it right right or you can get pushed around this way into the window around this thing and the funny thing is, even if you get pushed around, say you had just did the running vault, you had just did that, and now you're looping around this thing again, they could see that coming. So say you're going around this way, and then they mind game around this way. That just gave you ease to either come here, or if they were pushing you this way, and they double back to cut you off to window, same thing. You could just go right towards the pallet. So that's why looping this middle thing, obviously if it's a shorter killer, it's a bit rough, but if it's a tall killer, this right here is a really fun thing to sort of work on. I medium vaulted there, but that would be a perfect one that you, anybody, including myself, to work on and try to work on fast vaulting because you don't want to run it as wide as possible. But if you're coming around this way, it is very useful to be able to running vault just like that because that way you could turn around and look and see if they double backed and go either way. But that's why looping this thing right here sort of has no wrong way because the second they start double backing, you can go to the pallet. And if they don't double back at all, then you can just get the actual fast vault either direction because if they push you around this thing this way same thing you can just get the fast vault now the one area you really want to avoid being in on this tile is being caught back here if you're trying to stay and loop the tile this is no man's land essentially because they can get you and you can't especially if it's a smaller killer you can't really see them coming so this every now and then the scenario arises where you're trying to sort of like hide or make the killer not know where you went where you come back here, but 99% of the times when you're looping this, you're gonna try to be staying like in this area or right in front of that window because there's, just, and, and right here, the killer is closer to the pallet or the window than you are, and you're just in no man's land out here. You don't wanna be stuck out here. That's why you wanna be messing with that and then coming in this way. This is another tile where you can sort of break line of sight. They might mind game themselves and you can get away to something else. But honestly, I just think the most fun thing about this tile is looping this one right here. But ideally, if they were just gonna loop you the same way over and over, you'd come in this way, they push you around, they push you around here, they push you around the long way or vault the window, they push you around here, they come and say they respected it again, and they just do that. But obviously, that's why we talk about all the different mind games the killer can do. Like push you out here and you still don't see something, you run a little bit wide around here, and then since you're back around here, you're back to the pallet again. So there's no like super ideal way, same with LT walls, how you're like, yes, technically you get six easy vaults if the killer pushes you this way, but almost no killers do. But ideally, that's sort of what you'd want to be aiming for. When you vault the window, whichever way they push you, they could push you either way. And you either game this wall right here. And if they mess with themselves, you can come to this pallet. The second you see some mind games, you can sort of try to get away. But that is the one area where you sort of never know how it's going to go. There is no easy answer for when you are in this area. Same with lane gyms. Same with NO gyms. It's just being in this area is the unsafe, you're going to get hit area, unless you like get lucky on the pallet stun or leave. That's why a lot of times they'll just greed the pallet because you expect the killer to do some type of mind game. And if they do any mind game at all, pretty much, you're gonna make the window. And that's what I think is just a more consistent way to loop this tile. To identify these ones running up, it's kind of exactly like a lane gym from this side. You'll see the pallet there, but the difference will be this little dumpster up here. So you'll know I have a window there. If you're coming from this side, it's easy just because you can see this little 90 degree angle where this hook is. So that is an easy tell on what's going to go on. And any other tile that's even remotely shaped like this one would have another pallet up that way anyway. Could be a long wall and the pallet would be on the other side, but the long wall you wouldn't be able to see that 90 degree thing there. Coming from this side is another easy way to be able to tell which one it is because you'll be able to see the pallet there and you'll see this fun window right here in the middle. So this is an easy tell as well. The only tell where I feel like it's a little bit difficult to tell which one it is would be from this angle. But same thing, it loops so similarly to any other gym that you might mistake it for, like a... 
a lane gym or an NO gym that even if you did misidentify it, it would pretty much be the exact same plays that you'd want to make in the first place, which exactly what I just did there would probably be what I would do, cut in, break line of sight, make the killer try to mind game themselves and make it to the window. It's probably what I would do from that, from that angle, since that would probably be the hardest to game it from. Since the other tiles are so similar, it almost doesn't matter if you misidentify that one. As long as you don't misidentify it drastically terrible and think it's an LT wall. Where she come from? Where is she going? And I'm holding forward. Living my best life. <laughs> it wasn't silent saw, but he was definitely tickling. <laughs> that scared the shit out of me. <laughs> Yay! Just like that. Can I make this? Yay! I can! Let's go. Inch TV, and I had a 65 inch TV. I got very lucky there. Yeah, this is. So this is a different variant of the Orman Gym. It's basically you would loop it the exact same way. It's just this wall right here is a bit longer and safer. And this wall right here is shorter and not quite as safe. Because this wall right here was the wall that was over here before. And then this long wall was the one that was right here on this pallet. But similar, you can still loop it this way. You can still get the running vault as well. It is very difficult. If you're looking behind yourself, but it is possible if you're looking this way. And you can still get the running vault. As I said, it's just very difficult if you're looking behind yourself for that mind game. But if you're doing it, you have to wait till you get to that white thing, and then you have to wait till the last second. But you can see the white thing, it looks like a water heater. Once you see that on your screen, then you turn and go that way, and you'll get it every time. But it is hard, as I said. It takes some practice. But once you see that water heater, that's when you turn to the side and vault. Water heater, turn to the vault, and I messed it up that time. It is a decently hard vault to get if you're not looking where you're going, but it is worth practicing if you're not looking where you're going. And then same thing, you could loop this and you can raise your camera from above a little bit so you can see, and if they push you that way, you can go to the pallet, or if they push you this way, you can go to the window. Same thing if you went like this and they mind gamed it, you could get to the pallet. Or if you just came over right here and you had enough distance, you could go to the pallet anyway. But it works pretty much just the same as the other one. It's just the walls are flipped around a little bit. So another way that you can sort of simplify this tile on top of putting an extra little trick, if you don't want to think too hard about this tile since there's so many different plays you can literally make, it has to be this tile though. It doesn't work quite as well if you have this thing where this wall is to be. It has to be this variant of it. But if you really want to make it simple and you were coming from this direction and you push through this window and they go around that way, you run around here, you run around this wall, you can see them coming around. When they come around, you run and you pass vault it again. They're going to push around that way. If they do, then we can do it again if we want to. And this is probably the simplest way that you can really loop this tile. Now, sometimes when you're running this way and they see you do that, they're going to push through this way instead. And you can see them coming. Because if you're going like that and you don't see them coming that, that's when you would go to the, to the pallet instead when they try to cut you off. But alternatively, another trick you can do if you're trying to mix it up on them. Say you went this way the first time. And you did it. And then the second way you go on the inside, so he sees you on the inside, but you're hugging this wall to, to the left side, making it look like you're about to cut towards the pallet. And then when you do, you cut this way, and when you see the killer break to that wall, then you just cut right back and do that. So basically you're just faking him into thinking you're going to go for the pallet this time, like this. And then you cut in and do the, and do the vault. But that's going to be what catches him going on the outside this way, is because you were throwing him off with your pathing that way before you went and did the vault in the first place. Now, in that scenario, it doesn't even matter if you get the running vault. Running the vault is obviously what you want to practice for, but getting it without looking is a little bit hard, but it is possible. You just have to wait for that little thing and then turn it around. But obviously, it's really hard. I like to show you guys messing up over and over to show you guys that even with 8,000 hours, it took me five tries to get it right. <laughs> so it is always worth the practice to be able to put it in. And that is a good play you can make is when you're going this way and then turn it back, back around and go this way because he will fake 
He might fake, I should say. He might fake and think, oh, he's going to go that way, and then he turned right back around and went that way. Now you're at the complete opposite side of the tile from him. But that's basically if you want to throw everything away, essentially, and think about it as simple as you can. You push around that way, and you push around this way, and then you go up this way. And like I said, you can mix it up and go that way. Instead of trying to do this every time and run around this, because this is the more fun way to do it. But if you want to just not think that hard, just run around this and go to that window. And then if you want to switch it up, you can do this trick here. And if you don't want to switch it up and you come and he comes around that way, that's when you can just cut and game to the palette. And you can greet it and go back around this way and start it over if you want. And you can run right back here, jump right back around and go do this thing over again, just like we just did in the first place. <laughs> Juke that, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the big swings. Oh, it might be at Fury. I, I can't. I can't tell. Ha <laughs> 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 Or something that's not like a fucking LT wall. Oh, here we go. Here's a good one. Oh. No. Oh. God damn it. He, he got me here. Oh. No. Yeah, that's what I thought. What the fuck is this tile? Isn't this? Oh no, it's the wrong way. The window's on that side. <laughs> Boo. I might be able to throw that down actually. But. There we go. So this is what I call the NO gym because this is sort of similar to an Orman gym and it loops almost the same way. It's kind of a mix between a lane gym and a Orman gym because lane gym wouldn't have this one big wall to the side and Orman gym would have this slanted wall up here. So it's kind of like a mix between the two. That's why I ended up just calling it a new Orman gym. And these ones you loop very, very similarly to lane gyms. I Lane gyms are one of the only gyms where I don't like even pre-dropping, even if that was the case, because if you pre-drop, the killer can sort of mind game you and you're stuck in this little weird hallway and it's mind gameable when you come around here because you can't see and they can moonwalk and stuff could happen. Obviously, that's when you would jump the window. But lane gyms is one of my favorite gyms to greed the pallet, let the killer mind game itself. And then obviously you're going to get extra loops over this way. The killer push you around this way or that way, whichever killer... Whichever way the killer pushes you around, you can come back in this way. If you're coming from this way, another fun thing to get away from the tile, if the killer's coming around here, 
to do is do the break line of sight, run out. Killer might do some mind games on, on their own self and then get away. That even happens if you're coming this way. A lot of times if you're coming this way from this gym, you can come in here and as long as you don't just sit there, the killer will do some craziness while they try to mind game themselves in. And that's why throwing it can be a little bit dangerous. Because if you throw this pallet, you're either stuck trying to vault it and hope they didn't go that way or running outwards towards where the killer is before being able to make it towards the window. And that's why specifically with these and lane gyms, I think it's actually better to greet the pallet instead of pre-dropping, even if you're in trouble, because they expect you to pre-drop on this one and there's a lot they can do about it so even if you're running away from this one and you come in this way come in this way and then just go to the window and then see which way you're going and then hopefully they'll push you this way because in my opinion this is the easiest way to leave the tile and they come around here you come in around there let them mind yourself and there you go off to wherever you want to go to next now if they push you around the other way it would be the interesting one if you're coming around here and you jump this if they push you around this way same thing you can come to the pal this way and you'd run it this way but when you greet it you want to come this way and if you you can sort of see which way they're going, so if you don't even see the killer on this side, same thing, I would just use that to get away from the tile and let the killer mind game themselves. But if you do see the killer there, you have to sort of wait, and you can, that's why they put, once again, things like this, holes in the wall so you can see, and you can come around this way. Or you can come back around this way if they push you around. And then same thing, if they push you around this way, you could come around, they might mind game themselves, and you might be able to make it away. And if they didn't, you could greet it, and then come back around this way. But that is a just insanely unsafe pallet that is much better to just sort of get away from it and let the killer mind game themselves. To identify this one when you're coming up, you're going to see some lanes in the middle. Once you see the lanes in the middle in the window there, you know the pallet's going to be on that side. And the big identifier is this little thing right here because lane gyms don't have that one and neither do or neither do Ormond gyms and that would be the difference identifying it as an O gym. Same from this side. This side would probably be the easiest to identify because you can see the pallet and you can see the big wall right there while seeing the other lanes this way right here would be a little bit difficult to identify as well but if you're looping it this way you would pretty much at least identify it as a lane gym even once you jump the window and if you identified it as a lane gym even if that is technically wrong you'd still pretty much be looping it the same way so it wouldn't really be that harmful this way this way is a rough way obviously we're up on the hill to identify which way it is but it wouldn't be too bad because on Auto Haven Wreckers, you can see the pallet there anyway, so you know you'd have a pallet there, you know to have a window on the far side. So this side would be probably the most intimidating in terms of which way you'd want to really plan to loop from, but also because of the pallet, it is a dead giveaway on which tile it is. <clears throat> what tile is this here? The fucking fuck is this tile? Oh, uh, I know which tile this is. Oh, it's that tile? No, of course they ran into it. It was Shadow Step. Here we got the double windows. So now this is another one where ideally, if you're running in this way, the killer would push you around this way. And then you come to this one right here. And then the killer would run around that way, push you this way. And then you come around this way. And then jump the pallet again. And then the killer would push you around that way. Ideally, same with like LT walls, this would be the perfect pathing. But that would be if the killer didn't try anything and had never chased a survivor on this tile before. So what I like to use sort of to gain extra distance and reset the chase is this wall right here in the middle. You can see through it. You can see over it. You can see through it on that side. You can see through it on that side. So even if you're standing right here, which you'd keep your meat your feet moving you have a way that you can sort of go no matter which way no matter which way he pushes you using this wall you can either jump to that window or that window so if he pushes you around this way then you can jump this one and if he pushes you around this way same thing you gotta w worry about this double back here if the killer does double back a little bit then you can come around this and then i'll probably if you have enough distance you can come back to this one and start over but a lot of times if they push you around that way it'll get you into this 50 50 which most of looping will come down to once you know how the tiles work it just comes down to 50 50s most of the time but it's good to know what the 50 50 chances are once you're looping that way because you'll give the killer a lot more chances at 50 50s if you don't know exactly what pathing and where to go you want to minimize as many 50 50s as possible then obviously try to win them but you're not always going to win 50 50s that's the point of it being a 50 50 but this is a perfect example of one is going right here but that's basically what dbd will come down to once you know how all the tiles work is 50 50s and this would be the first one in the pathing that that we would want to take that way it would force because if we go there and he goes the other way you come right back to here and then right back to this game which you can't really sneak up on you on and no matter which way he pushes you if he got a little bit more distance on you a bigger jump you could just jump this one right here but if you reacted in time when he came around here you can just jump right to this one which is the safer window of the two because now no matter which way he pushes us around we can sort of we can even come back to this one if we wanted but we could go to that one either way 
It's just, that's why I like doing this, because that's usually where it forces the first 50-50. Because if he pushes us this way, he can jump that. Or if we had enough space and he didn't double back, we could jump that window. And if he pushes us around this way, around this one, then we can jump this one, which is the same thing. And killers pretty much always go around that way when you do. And you're not going to have a super amount of time. Sometimes you might have to fake here. And if they double back, then you can fake this window as well, or jump this window as well. But most of the time, if they got the jump on you, you're going to end up going for this fake right here instead. But a lot of times you'll have the distance once you jump that window where they pushed around and you can make it all the way. You have to wait for that 50-50 there to see if they double back. But a lot of times, if you reacted in time when you pushed you around here, you have enough distance to jump that. They're going to be in the middle of that, push you around this way, and then you do have enough distance to make it right back to this wall again. So that's why, in general, I like playing this wall instead of using this wall as a checkpoint, because this wall is a checkpoint. What happens when they push you this way? You're either going to have to do this, or you're going to immediately be stuck into a 50-50. And that's why I try to minimize as many 50-50s as I can by either getting pushed this way, because this is not a 50-50 yet. I don't count, like, checkpoints as 50-50, right? So if they push us around this way, there still is no 50-50 if we got pushed around that way. But if we, if we got jumped around that way and they pushed us around this way, this forces us into the first 50-50. We'd either want to jump it, or obviously if you didn't jump it, you would fake it and then come right back to this one. Or even better, if you faked it and it, like, because you don't want to run right back to this one if you fake it and the killer's like right here. You're basically going to run right into the killer. So if you fake it and you don't see him yet, that's when you could come back to this one. But if you fake it and he's close, you can either run side to side, and the second he pushes around that way, you could run back to this one and start it over again. Now, identifying the double windows tile coming up on it, it looks like it would be a long wall right there in the middle, but you can tell that it's not going to be because obviously the way the rest of it is, you can see it in the first place because there would be a wall right across here and I wouldn't be able to see the long wall from this angle. And once you know that, you know that you're going to have the window right there. And if you're running from this angle, I'd say the best way to start the chase would just be run right into that. Same thing if you're coming from this way. You know it's not a long wall because it's not quite long enough to be a long wall and the window is square in the middle. So you know it's going to be a double window, especially because you can see right through it. And that would be the best way to initiate the chase, so just be running right into that. If you're coming from this side, you can't really see it, but you're going to know that it's the double windows because of that teeny little dumpster right there sticking out the middle. And if I was running from this side, best way to initiate chase, I'd say, would be to run right in here and go this way and start off from that way. And the same thing, if we're coming from this side here, best way to initiate chase after seeing, because you would see that window and the giving that window would be sort of a dead giveaway, then might as well use that window for running right towards it. You don't want to put yourself immediately into a 50-50 scenario. So unless he was so close that hit that jumping this, because if he is close enough when you jump this, that's such a short wall that you wouldn't get anywhere. So if he was close enough where you wouldn't get anywhere, that's when you'd want to immediately force this into a 50-50 scenario and try to win. A little bit down and a lot up, you wouldn't, it'd be hard to like find matches. But that's what was fun is you'd get the gank squads and like they were purposely at, like at a low level trying to stomp on the noobs and whatnot. Okay, here we go. Can I jump this? And they would just be purposely trying to do that and stomp on low level, but that's why you would be around for it. Let's go. Won the 50 50 there. I have to win the 50-50 here. All right. Well, you see why I was like, I'll be, uh, I'll be zoned out if I win, <laughs> if I win that other 50-50. That was what would have happened last time. There we go. I was hoping that would happen. Did you go up? No, you didn't. Here we go. Yeah, oh, penis now. I don't think I make it. I did. What the fuck? No! That was like a weird 360 attempt. <laughs> Usually I aim my camera down. Which way do they play this? 
All right, go the other way. No! Let's see, a chance backfired. <laughs> Another setup here. <laughs> now this is pod racing. Damn. Let <laughs> me injured again. God damn it. Oh shit. No, you're supposed to swing there. Oh god, I stubbed my toe. No, that's what I'm talking about in the warm up game. Sucks. That's why I wear jumpsuit Jake in the warm up games too, though. Nice one. I'll work on the double windows, actually. I need to work on this tile. I need to get better at it. That's what I was thinking you were going to do. Yeah. No, I'll make it around! <laughs> Damn it. I, th I do. Yeesh. God damn it. <laughs> I'll go there. Very nice. Is she out of hatchets, hopefully? No, she's not! Damn it! <laughs> I w if I could still get invasions there, I would, I would still be making builds. Like, if I could just do invasions in general. Ah! Fuck, I stubbed my toe! Boo! That was terrible! And that's it for the regular common tiles that spawn on all the other maps as well. Not all the other maps, but most of the other maps as well. And now let's get into the Auto Haven Wrecker common tiles that only spawn on the Auto Haven Wrecker realms. The first and most recognizable tile that spawns here, I'd say, is the car and the truck tile. And it took me forever to even realize this, but this tile is the exact same as this tile. They always spawn in one big circle. You're always either just going to have the pallet here or you're going to have the pallet here. Now, it really doesn't make it a difference because the way you would loop it would be the same anyway because this truck isn't really big enough and it's a little bit too far away for you to loop like the big truck once or twice and then cut towards the, the pallet if it's on... If the pallet's over here, you would basically just be looping this pallet over here by itself as a regular as a regular tile that you'd want to chain to something else as well. And you'd want to loop this side unless it's Huntress. Or unless it's a projectile killer, you'd want to loop this side, hugging as tight as possible, hoping the killer stub their toe. You don't want to stub your toe either. You want to be looking at that specifically is the hardest to see when you're coming around the corner. Because look how wonky that hitbox is. I don't know why it's like this, but you see that teeny tiny little tire on the ground that I'm putting my toe on, that's actually where the hitbox starts. And that's why it's hard to see when you're coming around the corner, and that's why you'll end up stubbing your toe. And coming around this one too, you'll when you're like, oh, I thought I was gonna slide off of that. But that's the only thing you really gotta be careful about. And as I said, if you if you know that and you're looping as tight as possible, you might get lucky and the killer stubs their toe on it, and then you can get extra loops on it when it is here. Now, if the tile is here, the pallet, it's obviously much safer, especially if you pre-drop it, but it doesn't really have something that's completely safe against projectile killer. You're going to get annihilated on this one. And this one, you only have the actual hood. Not the hood. You actually have the passenger area of the car blocking everything with a little bit blocked here as well. But these are long enough anyway where you'd probably get hit before you could go side to side either. So if you had if you had this pallet here, you would really want to be looping this one the most versus projectile killers, especially because they're 110 anyway. So them double backing wouldn't be as dangerous. All their killers, you'd want to loop this one. And then the car... And the truck tile are pretty much, when it spawns there, is just as simple as it can get. It's just you got to think about it being big enough to connect to something else. So this is a big car, obviously. Like this one, we could immediately just connect to this right here. 
and that would be that. But as it is, a lot of times you're just gonna end up looping it by itself. This is a broken setup that we can talk about later and how to utilize this broken setup. A lot of times you're just gonna have this regular car and you gotta think about little things like if you're playing against a sliding killer like an Oni or a Billy or something, you would wanna loop this tile right here instead because of the weird stuff in the way like the tire and the tree. It would make it much harder, or a Blight, same thing for a Blight. It's much harder for Blight to try to slide all the way around since they can't actually like hug tech around this thing. So you'd much wanna use this instead of this one if you're if you're talking about sliding killers but the opposite if you're looping a projectile killer that's when you would want to loop the truck right here another thing another tile or another killer i think is worth a mention on this one would be doctor is kind of weak to this tile right here because no matter which way he shocks you can just run it back around so if i'm running this way right and i come around here and the doctor goes to shock me the second he slows down to shock you run to this one and i'm running it this way Right? And no matter which way he does, same thing. If he goes to shock me here, I just run a straight line here. And then come to this way. And then, if, you know, and same thing if I'm getting pushed this way. And Doctor shocks me here, and then I would just loop to this. And then he wouldn't be able to shock me again before I threw a pellets. A lot of times they go to shock anyway, and then reset chase. Now I'm here. And then he goes to shock here, I would run to this. Same thing if he was pushing me around this way. If he'd shock me here, I would just run this long way here. Come around here. Right? And if he was come around here. Say he was going to shock me again, think I cut through his pal, then he just cut back here, and it's back to square one with him. So, this tile is pretty damaging versus Doctor. I'm not really sure exactly why without add-ons. With add-ons, there's stuff you can do, but without add-ons, currently, this is kind of a rough tile versus Doctor. And you can capitalize on him losing distance by just barely switching to the next car. And they won't get blood lost and catch up to you because they're using their power. But, but most of the time, these are two just very simple pallets, whether it spawns here or whether it spawns here. It's funny, it's the mix- oh fuck. I think he has the, uh, what do they call it? That lethal pursuer. Lethal, probably a general a speech, holy fuck. Ran back here. Just so I can get slid on. Your hug tech on right here. Are you ready? Oh, I lied. Yeah. These have no collision, right? I don't know what they do. I can't I remember. Know. <laughs> those kind of He's getting his thing back so I can guess I should have tried to block it. Did I block it? I didn't even mean to do that. I got lucky. Not gonna that was not skill. That was luck. But it made me look skillful. Oh! I didn't guess that though. I guessed that one correctly. This one does have the tree in the middle. That's why I kind of camped here. I'm like, it would be hard for him to hug tech from this side. Ah! Thought about but it for a second. I don't know if it's like speed with a trailing vial or just. just oh speed. god. No! Know. What the fuck? Is there nothing you can bounce off over there? That's so weird. Why can't he? Oh, he can't. What the fuck? But I knew I knew he couldn't slide that. That's why I want. Oh god! That's why I wanted to do this one, but. It's kind of crazy, it has nothing to slide off of on the other side. Damn it. <laughs> I want to stay here and loop this. I'm going to feed this man's. Unfortunately. It's like not letting him get me in chase. What the f? Is he not getting me in chase on purpose? Or is. There we go. Greet it! Yay! I've already spent long enough here. Yay! What, do you have End Fury or something? Dang it! I did the long turnaround. I hate doing this. Yay! You must have, like, End Fury, right? <laughs> I looped a little bit loose that time. I got skill issued. Uh oh. He's gonna have to hit me this way. No, oh, he's gonna go for M1. Yes! Dang, good shit. He got that nice slide. 
He got to the left and then slid into me. Oh, he has saved the best for last. That's fucking terrible. No, I fucking stutter step. Light won't be hard to shake because you have to do so many fucking little things that you have to like memorize and be going through your head while it's happening. But oh god! <laughs> but you, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, he is fast as fuck, though. Jesus. Back to the same one. <laughs> Let's do it again. <laughs> Dang it, though. He, like, kind of has to okay, hit me with it. Okay, I actually can't fuck around this game with totems. I stubbed my toe. Boo! <laughs> I skill issued myself. <laughs> I got the challenge done! It only took a whole week. <laughs> that person on hooks like, what the fuck? The question is, can I loop this together? Oh damn. <laughs> Bad. I'm pretty much fucked here. Why didn't she set a bird? I would have been fucked there. Now I can drop this. He can't see me, can he? Can I bust him out, please? What the fuck? It's like never done that before. It, like, gave me a collective bust out. Did you see that? I've, like, never seen that. You know what I mean by a collective bust out? Where it, like, it stopped? Usually it resets, right? I don't play enough Ghostface, though. Maybe it doesn't. Ghostface, I kind of try not to play. Let's go. Strike two! Yeah, third strike. No! Oh! <laughs> Run right here. This is not a bad, as long as I don't misplay it. Yay! I can't really see right there. That's the only bad spot. Oh! I was like, that's really tight. This might not work. Yay! Yes! Good shit. Yeah, I like forgot about that printer. My parents are like fucking through the roof about that thing. <laughs> Especially because they can print off two things. My dad's a math teacher, so my dad like gets actual fucking super use out of this thing. I was like, hey, that's cool. My mom's a nanny, so she doesn't get much use out of it. But, damn it! <laughs> but, there's like another feature that I never one time used that they used. That I was like, damn, like I never thought about that. Fuck, should I go around? I path too wide, this is Sag. I don't know if that would have hit me if I didn't path too wide. <laughs> that was funny. Whenever they update the website, like the next time they do, that's when it shows up. Fuck, I should have thrown it there. Ah! <laughs> I just don't have a fucking trap here. Dang. Mind game, no worky. You got a pretty good setup here. Yeah, I do. He left me. 
This is the other four piece in all the Auto Haven Wreckers realms, where similar to the McMillan and the Cold Winds ones, where there's four pieces to it and the pallet can either spawn here or the pallet can either spawn here. Now, the interesting thing about this tile is same thing. It's not quite as simple as the other one is. The other one, it's hard to really connect stuff and use, but this is another one of those tiles where if you're zoned out, you can use the thing close to it to make your way back to it. So say I was running to this and the killer was in was on this side. The killer was over here and this was the only tile loopable in the area. The killer would beat me right to this pallet. You gotta think about that. But this right here is more than long enough, so you'd force the killer to loop you around this way, and whichever way the killer loops you around, it's going to be long enough for you to make it to this pallet. Even if you're on this one here, same thing. If you're on this one here, because it's shaped strange, it's shaped like a question mark, sort of, from this side, which makes it longer than it really seems. This is definitely long enough, no matter which side he pushes you around, to make it to that tile. And that's where you really, really want to use the parts of the tile that don't have a pallet is if you're zoned out. Also against killers like a dredge, because a dredge could have a way to, you know, if they... We're pushing around and they set their remnant and they're going to push you around this way. That's when you could just come to this thing. And then same thing, you're like, if the remnant's over there, and now I'm on this side of the pallet, and, like, and it doesn't even matter which way I go. And then same thing, if the remnant, like, push, puts the, if the dredge pushes the remnant right here and then pushes me around this way, same thing. Then I can just come to this thing and loop this thing instead. <laughs> no matter which way. And then he uses the remnant again, right? And it can push back around to this thing. So, like, a tile like this sounds very strange because Dredge should have an anti-loop power, but one little pallet there, because of the extra little things in the area, can literally make it so Dredge can't use his power, as long as you're on top of that. Doctor, same thing with this tile, not quite as strong as the other one, but if you were running towards this and you knew you were going to get shocked, don't, like, just go in there, then you could loop something like this, and then if he goes to shock you again, then you could come to this, right? And then if he goes to shock you before you get that, then you come to this part over here, and if he goes to shock you again, you can come back to this truck as we were just talking about. And same thing, you could like use this part too if you really wanted to. It's just, it all depends with the flow of the game. And if you're going to get beat somewhere, then you use the other part, which would sort of reset distance or make it a different amount of distance that you would make it so that you could throw the pallet or at least get to the point where you would be able to throw the pallet and create a mind game possibility as well. But basically, you're just going to, it's either going to spawn here and it's going to spawn here. But it will spawn in one of the two places and you can use the other parts of the tile accordingly. Especially we were just talking about Blight being able to slide. Like you wouldn't want to try to loop this car. I mean, obviously the hook helps a little bit here, but that's what stuff like this would be better for to loop even if the even if the pallet was right there. Because hug teching this is going to be a little bit more difficult because of all this crap in the way. Not saying it's impossible, but especially if they push you one way and then mind game you, but it just makes it a bit harder. Dang, it didn't work. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Does he get the lusty blood? Swing again. Yes! Cause it's one, two, three strikes. You're out at the old ball game. Yes! Damn. <laughs> We tried to wait him out and we literally just like lost patience. We're like, all right, these guys won. <laughs> oh god. Yeah, he got me now. No, he didn't. I actually really like these cars against Huntress. They're a lot of fun. Because that thing's hard to throw over. But this is long. 
Maybe she can hit me here. That's what I was worried about. Did you get closer? Neener, neener, neener. <laughs> you guys ever see Attack on Titan when Kenny fucking said that? That's just hilarious. Yes! Got auto aim to buy the video game. Yay! I mean, skill on my part. No! This is terrible. I'm still gonna fucking read the shit out of this ballot. I do not care. Ready for this Pellegrine? Watch this. Yes! Are you gonna get me though? Good shit. I She's right on me. No, she's not. My God. This is madness. I think she can hit that, though. See what I mean? You just like take chances and sometimes it works. And still, same with not spending any blood points. I was like, well, if I don't need to buy any new perks. That person gave up on hook. We have two gens done. I don't know what artist was doing there. <laughs> <laughs> I took a hit because of it. curve this yay we got the jukes uh -uh. which ones break down oh my god she did not fall for that whatsoever. <laughs> and I'm just like, <laughs> and game crash, and I'm like, no! 
I didn't even get a chance to see if I could fend that off. Dang, he saw what I was trying to do. Damn it. Good shit, ain't it? <laughs> oh god. It didn't help. Curves only really. I want to chain the two. <laughs> Good shit. That was a very nice curve. Forward, hold forward, loop the truck and juke the bird. Throw the pallet down, juke it, turn around, run around and juke it one more time. Fuck, I stubbed my toe, boo! That was terrible. I made the right play, and then I stubbed my toe. That was fucking terrible, dude. That's so fucking sad. Oh, yeah. You definitely have fucking what's it called? Bamboozical. God damn it. <laughs> I dropped a pallet. <laughs> that was funny. Up it. No. Oh god. That guy's playing on an extremely high sensitivity. Holy F. Probably should have thrown that down. And hold W. No! I have to hope this greed works. I stubbed my toe. Big Sag, I stubbed my toe and skill issued it. A real. A real awesome stuff. Dang it. I was hoping I gave her enough space. There's Nemi. This is a terrible loop against Nemi. So this is just a tree rock. This one is great to greed, and this is another one where you're gonna wanna use the top of the rock as your checkpoints, depending on which killer it is, because you're not gonna stay right here as a checkpoint if you're playing against a Sadako or, or a Hag or something. You're gonna need to use a different type of checkpoint, obviously. So you're gonna stay stuff like here, because you can see over the wall, because a pallet, normally a pallet would spawn like here, right? So if you're coming around here, you wanna see if they double back. If they did not double back, you can push around here. And that, if you want, and if not, you'd wanna stand right here as well. Keeping your feet moving, because this is far enough where they come around the corner. If your feet are moving, you can still make it to the pallet. And if they pushed around that way, you, they can see you there as well. Now this one is more fun to loop because it's just like very smooth and you can loop it over and over. But it is a smaller rock making it a little bit more unsafe. And stuff like right here, they could double back and possibly beat you to the pallet. So I think that rock over here is a bit more safe. But once again, if you're playing against like a trickster or something, this rock right here would be the safer rock in my opinion. They can hit you over little parts of it, but you can see the trickster more. And since it's 110, that's more important. And this rock right here is a bit longer. So this part right here, the straight shot, this right here is where you'd be able to get hit by like a hatchet or a death slinger's shot or a trickster's needle is this straight shot from this part to right here. And that's why more projectile killers, you'd sort of want to be looping this one more just to make it tougher, you can see them better, and they're 110 anyway, so it doesn't matter that it's a smaller rock. Oh, you're right, Trickster's not 110! Trickster is like still bad, so I just still consider him 110. God damn it. This is before I could even try to juke. I didn't expect him to shoot that fast. Oh, 
don't think I have anything over here, do I? I can't like see right now. God damn. Shit. Compared to my friends, I always picked up video games pretty fast. I don't actually. I think I pick up some games pretty slowly, but usually with games, I pick them up slowly. But I out again. I thought about juking, but I wasn't sure. Um, but I. So this is another tree rock. Well, it's a double tree rock essentially, because not double tree, double rock. Each rock has one tree, and you can get hit over this from projectile killers. Be careful, but this would be the better rock that you'd want to loop since you can see over it so much. Obviously, against projectile killers, would be a little bit different. You'd want to loop on this one, but this one is extremely unsafe. This one is pretty much begging to get hit. But sometimes you're just in the scenario. Billy would be another one if this pallet was already gone. Even then, you could loop this rock. It'd be pretty nice to loop against Billy. You can see a little bit through that tree right there, but not enough where I'd consider this any type of safe checkpoint. To be completely honest, you'd really just want to be looping this rock and only use the other rock in scenarios with like projectile killers billy oni sometimes i suppose well, even oni you're like asking to get hit but most of the time you're just going to do this one and only switch to the other one in specific scenarios We got him. Just accept you, you don't hear me, pig. I'm not back here. No, you hear me. I am back here. Damn. Damn it. This is the double tree, double rock. You got two trees on each rock. Now this one, same thing. You got the long side where you can see, and you want to be actually keeping these as your checkpoints at the tip. Because whenever you get to these type of tiles, you want to keep as much, and when you go to here, you can see over the rock right there, so you can see a little bit if they double back. But this one is another one where it's a little bit more dangerous against projectile killers, because they can hit you through this thing too, but it's just like sort of a long rock if you're running this way, like right there. But this one's not much better either, because it can hit you over this. So this rock is the one time where you'd want to pick this rock instead if you're playing against projectile killers. If you're now playing against projectile killers, this would be the rock you'd want to do. Because with this rock, it's hard for them to mind game, obviously. And there would be no way for them to actually <laughs> break line of sight for you to get to. Unless they tried to mind game, like, while they were right here, where they pushed you there. And then, and because they can do that. Like, right here, they break line of sight with you. They put their red stain there, and then they turn it around and moonwalk that way. But even then, if you're keeping your feet moving, it doesn't matter. You can still react in time and make it back to the pallet. As long as you keep your feet moving, a lot of times you can react in time. That's the most important part. Because you didn't let your momentum uh, go down and, and have to catch the momentum back up. And if the killer changed directions, they just did. So it's potentially, you'll gain distance every time they double back. Because like all the other competitive ones are, you know. They can hit me over this. Yeah. Oh shit, I fucked up. This is why paddles are amazing. <clears throat> I'm gonna have to hit him with the stall tech. Hopefully it works. I love doing that shit. Let's go. And you get maybe two more loops out of it. Alright, never mind. I knew this was coming. And I'm looping killer directly next to door. <laughs> this is a terrible idea. <laughs> he no respect. The no respecties. I'm just gonna watch this. I can. It was. I was correct. God damn it. Oh, 
Almost. I kind of want some toast. You just want some toast, like buttered bread toasted. Damn. So here's the corner rock. The corner rock literally used to not exist. They just put this corner rock here to be like, yeah, there's there's not a huge dead zone in the corner. <laughs> and it's not a guarantee it's going to be in this corner. It's just usually in the corner of the map. You can look for it. Obviously, it's just going to be a pile of tires and then this one rock here. And it is a fun, it is a pretty unsafe pallet, I'd say, mainly because it's always in the corner and there's not much you can connect it to. And the killer's going to know that. So even if you threw the, the, the pallet, the killer's going to wait till you're on this side of it, break the pallet, and then where are you going to go? Out here to nowhere? Or in this case, if the killer broke this, I might may be able to make it to this over here. And you wouldn't want to cut this way in towards the killer. Same thing. Because you would want to use this wall right here to make it to this pallet over here. But even then, that's kind of a long shot. Because a killer could just do some type of mind games where they break line of sight and they act like they're going to push you this way and then they come right back in and start breaking it and then you're stuck out here, right here, <laughs> as they're breaking the pallet and you're going to try to make it... No, I would not make it anywhere. <laughs> I don't think I would at least. And even if we did, it would be LT wall and that's not the best scenario that you would want to run into. But basically, this is the definition of a filler pallet nowadays. Now, pre-dropping it might get you somewhere and might be beneficial, but at the same time, if you pre-drop it, they might just do that thing where they act like they're going to loop it and then just break it and then you're stuck there anyway. So a lot of times with these, I just get to the corner. I'm like, oh shit, <laughs> the oh shit pallet essentially. You're out here in the corner, there's nothing else, and I'm just going to greet it over and over. And maybe I can greet it, the killer of mind game itself, with a broken line of sight that I can make it somewhere else. But most of the time, this is just basically another pallet to waste a little bit more time. So when you get to a corner, you don't just, like, go down immediately. <laughs> it's like, here, here's something for you. Thank you, behavior. That's what I was figuring. I figured he was just like, wait, let's go again. Looping tight. Let's go. Trying to loop as tight as possible. Oh, fuck. And I stubbed my toe. <laughs> I think he got me. No, he had me. That was really close. I don't want to leave. Oh, fuck. <laughs> there we go. He doubles back. No, I would have gotten hit there. Because I was even thinking, I was like, if he doubles back. Looping this way might be better, actually, for him. Oh, shit. No! All right, here we go. Oh, he's so close. He's just coming around. He has to be on controller. It's so fucking hard to do this on controller. Would you explain why he got auto-aimed into the window on that first... Uh, <laughs> first there we go good shit exactly <laughs> even if we escape this is one of those matches where you guys slapped up and down for I can get curved here too oh god I got lucky there <laughs> I can't see him there was this one possible I mean, obviously you could just m1 it but or would I have to misplay here? I might have to misplay here. I don't want to go anywhere. I'm not leaving. I'm not fucking leaving! Big, goofy turnaround. But I did that on purpose that time. No! Fuck, he would have had me there. Oh, fuck. This is where it gets difficult. Just want to stay here at the corner. Oh, shit. Oh my god. This rock is like the perfect size. Obviously he could have end one me like 50 million times, but... 
Oh shit. Is it like possible to do this one? Come on, Billy. We're rooting for you. Oh fuck! I fucked up, god damn it. <laughs> That's why I was like, I just have to hope she's uh out of hatchets. Ooh, we got a nice rock back here. Nice. And then greed this pallet as many times as we can. No, I, I'm not gonna throw it. She got out of wind! Oh god. I should have left there, but this is fun. Yay, I'll leave now though. It only took a whole week. Damn. I messed up. Chasing me? The food? He is! Ah! Good shit. I wasn't ready for it. God damn it. So this is the dumpster tile. This one is another pretty self-explanatory tile that's very safe, except for, I suppose, against certain short killers. But, you know, people like Sadako and stuff, it's still not even, like, the most unsafe one because it's pretty long and you have a really nice checkpoint right here that they can they cannot really guard. Because even if you ran right here and they double back, you'd see even Sadako over this little thing right here. So it's pretty unmind gameable. This is just like one big long dumpster that you can have. Now, this one is a big pre drop because if you pre dropped it and they decided to game it, this is a lot of distance from here. You can pretty much make it like just holding W to pretty much anywhere else if they decided not to break that pallet, which is why most of the time they will break that pallet. But it is still greetable if you're running up on it. They can still respect it and you can make it around even this side if they respect it enough but if they're bloodlust or they've respected it once or twice you might want to do this one but don't loop this side this side is only if you're trying to have some fun be a little saucy and loop the unsafe side because you can't really see over it that well and like a distance from the pallet so basically if the the killer gets any distance on you you're probably not going to make this pallet that's why you might as well just loop this side right here once again though if you're playing, uh, playing against a projectile killer same thing if this was your only option then this would probably be better to loop than this side because this is such a long tile right down here in the middle that you would get hit by it by any projectile even wesker if it was wesker you'd probably have to juke it <laughs> because it is long enough where he can hit you from the distance from here all the way to the pallet so if it's projectile killers or something like that then that's when you'd want to loop this side right here No! I should have ducked. Oh no! Read it. Oh! You're not scratching me, are you? No, he's not. He wouldn't be stalking me. It's not looping tight enough. <laughs> if you would have missed, can you imagine? That would have been hilarious. Oh god. This one actually. Me like a disc more. Yeah! Oh no! I don't know how that worked, but let's go with that, sure. No! I stubbed my toe! I actually think I was outplayed even if I didn't stub my toe, to be fair. Here we got the trucks. Now the trucks, you're always gonna have the pallet be right here, but the trucks are kind of unsafe. It looks like a pretty safe pallet to drop, but you can't really see the killer over much. Right here you can, and the killer could, but right here when you break line of sight, the killer could have just acted like they were going to, and when you're coming around here, they just moonwalk right around this corner, and hit you right there, and you can't see it coming. So this tile is big and the pallet looks really big, but it's not really that safe to actually just genuinely loop. You can sort of see through it at points, but the points are not consistent enough. Right here you can look up, I suppose, and see through it. So that would help a bit if you're actually trying to loop this right here. But still, you have that blind spot right here, which just kind of stinks. Because when you come around this corner, you can't see. And right here, you wouldn't be able to you'd be able to see them coming that way. But when you come around here, you can't see this through this car except for just barely. And that would force you into throwing the pallet or getting hit. So this is one of those pallets where if I was running up to it to greet it, I'd greet it to get to a different tile and not try to loop it. 
Or if I had a big head start, you would pre-drop it because this would, same thing, this is a huge tile, and the second they commit to one side, that is more than enough distance to get to another tile. But don't pre-drop it unless you're on death hook. Save it for then. <laughs> but if you're going to try to get a pallet stun on this one by looping it and then get a stun, you're asking to get mind gamed a little bit. Can do some type of camera tricks, like I said, like this to tilt it up and see, but that's not always going to be helpful, especially if they're pushing you the other direction. So now that we got the Auto Haven Wrecker common tiles out of the way, let's get the Auto Haven Wrecker main tiles out of the way. The big ones that usually have windows and that are, generally speaking, the stronger tiles on the map, especially one like this where it is a bunch of common tiles. So the first one I want to talk about is this semi truck. This semi truck looks really weak and it is pretty weak because you can get like your three vaults on it, but it looks like you'll get one vault and won't be able to make it around again. You can get your clean three vaults on this. You can even go for some mind games if you want. Where you vault around once. It's because of that car. The car is what they go wide around because it seems intimidating when you jump that window and the killer's standing right here. It never feels like I'm not going to make it around, but the killer has to go all the way around this truck. And that little extra distance is usually the distance or the difference for you to be able to make it around this again. Come right in here. And then do this now you want to be careful with the pathing on this one specifically right when you come through you don't want to be holding forward because it'll be a little bit wide see if i'm holding forward all the way through when i land this is where i land i'm this far away but if you didn't hold forward right when you land and you hold to the side it might stump your momentum the genius a little bit but at least you're not losing the distance so i feel like this is better to go this way than holding forward and being care and worrying about stag whoops and worrying about staggering because you do not stagger on this one anyway so you might as well immediately be holding to the right side. Now, the other thing you got to be careful about is this little leg. It is literally a leg right there on the ground. You have to be careful because if you're trying to loop way too tight and you come around this corner trying to be efficient, you can get stuck on this leg. As you can see, I'm turning. I'm walking forward, and that little leg on the ground will stop your momentum, as you see. So you have to be careful about that. Same with if I'm running this way, but you're never really going to be running this way. So when you come around this, got to be careful. I always run about the middle of this leg here. And then once you get around the leg, then you can worry about getting the fast fall. The fast fall is a little difficult. I wouldn't consider this a difficult fast, fast fall to get. You just got to be patient when you're coming around the thing. And then hit it at the last second to be able to get that fast fall. Now, a lot of times you'll end up, and I end up doing this too. I'm trying to tell myself to start juking it more on the first or second one. Because once you've already done one... Once you've already done one jump and you're doing the pathing, they're very likely to just go around this way again. Now what you got to be careful about is when you do, because if they even get to here, since it's a medium vault, it's very hard to just go back and forth. Because you want to juke it like this, but getting that running vault is pretty hard. I do mess it up a lot, but that is what you'd want to be doing when you juke it. So if I was coming in this way, you're looking to the side, you juke it, and then you're just running side to side like this. And then the problem is, is when you're running side to side, sometimes they'll catch you where you're like on the way back like this as they came back in. And then when you're on the way back, you panic. You're like, oh, no, and you don't get the running ball. As I just did there, it is possible, but you have a very small window to actually be able to do that. But generally speaking, you don't want to be juking first until you've actually done one because, you know, the killer doesn't know how you're going to loop it yet. And the first one, it looks unsafe, but if you get one, you're pretty much always going to get three. It doesn't look safe enough to get three, but it's pretty much almost always guaranteed safe enough to get three. And that's why once you've done once or twice, that's why I want to do this over and over. And then once they get to about here, you, you, you can medium vault until their foot gets about to this chest on the ground this little it's literally a torso like a ripped off human torso once they get to about here you can medium vault unless the ping's bad but that's why i'd rather do this instead and even medium vault a lot of times they're waiting for you a lot of times the killer will not dedicate in for a swing they're just waiting for you to go back that way because even for killers it doesn't look that safe it looks like if they jump i'll be able to make it around again but it, no it's big enough where this tile is generally safe enough where you'll get your three vaults as long as you don't stub your toe or or medium vault or something as long as you're getting your running vaults you'll pretty much always get your guaranteed three vaults coming around this thing and it's a big tile so if you wanted to get your three vaults on the third one a lot of times you could make it to another tile like right here so you get your three free vaults then you can loop this one and even if you were, if you're coming around this way and the killer decided to mind game and you start off this one, you could loop it right back to this one again. Say the killer had mind game itself a few times and you were messing around over there, then you could come back or through the pallet and they break it and now you're back to this one for three more vaults. So you can either do it your three vaults and then go somewhere else or you can mess around with the mind game. The mind game is a little bit dangerous, but 
it's it's less dangerous than it really should as i said killers don't really like to come in and try to hit you this way they'd rather push you out that way and get the head start so you can do this more often than i even do and a lot of times i chicken out till i'll do like two or three and then i'm like oh dang i should have done it and then i end up meeting vaulting like that so a lot of times i wait too long but it is possible to be right on top of it and still get your running vault no matter which way they're pushing you you just gotta be really patient and do it just like that it's just really hard not to panic hit the vault button when you see them come around <laughs> All right, can I not stub my toe here? I've been trying to run this one more just to see how many times you can actually make it. No, oh, I could have made it. I thought she was going to go out that way. So the croutons are amazing. Oh my god. Why did I even run that way for her? You notice you can stub your toe like I did in the back of that? I wasn't going to make it. No point in going that way. Hold forward away from the gin. Run home. Run home. Like the kid in fucking... What was it called? Angels... This is bad. I didn't fucking... I'm bad, bruh. I'm not gonna make it again either. Hey, thank you. Oh, fuck. God damn it. Well, it worked for a second. Hold W. Oh, yeah, he only plays Blight. I don't know how that doesn't get boring, I'll be honest. Just like steamrolling survivors every game with the. God damn it. I slow vaulted like a BK. All right. So this is the excavator. This one is one of the funniest ones on the map because if it's a short killer, this window becomes a lot more dangerous. If it's a super tall killer, you can like see their head coming up this thing. And the second you see their head coming up this thing, like at all, you can just jump the window. And it looks, and it is farther than it appears. You can pretty much always make it right back around. Not always. That's why you want to wait until you see there, or even the red stain. But the thing is, even with the red stain, it's hard. So a lot of times with this window, you're going to be doing this and waiting, and, and always be on the run, and then look back. And if you don't see them, you don't have to jump. But this is definitely one of those ones where it, and I'm lazy sometimes. Sometimes I just wait here as well, but that usually gets me hit. It's best to sit here like this and then get ready, and then that's why you hit your running ball at the last second because if you don't see them up here, then you don't. And then you keep coming here right here because from right here you can see them coming and then you can make it here and still get the running vault just like that but the fun thing about this is is you can use the the window to vault a few times obviously but you can also throw in the pallet to spice it up a little bit so if you're just looping this whole big thing by itself you don't want to immediately just cut up to the window because if you had this whole distance you can also tilt your camera up a little bit if you tilt your camera up a little bit as well you can see through not all the way there are definitely places they can double back at but you can see if you get the camera in line because you can't tilt it all the way up that doesn't work you have to get it like just perfect like right there and you can see through and that's when you'd want to use the full distance of it and then the funny thing about that is, is when you're running this way once the killer finally catches up, if you're running the full distance of it, because it is pretty big, obviously, when they finally catch up, if they respect the pallet, that's when you start playing the window. Come in here, you respect the pallet, then they go up to here, and that's when you're doing this. And then you don't vault if you see him, but if you see him coming up here, then you vault. And then jump down, come around this way, and can do it all over again. Be careful of the totem spawns and locker spawns, obviously. But same thing, when worst comes to worst, say that window is blocked, you vaulted all three times, and now you're playing this, you, sometimes you can even greed this enough where you're just going around and the killer respects it because this is a pretty unsafe pallet if you're looping it this way but because of that you can use this greed to make it back to that even if you are looping it this way say you're coming around this way and the killer respects it and we're looping around this that's why this little extra thing is right here that obviously it's a little tough because the killer can mind game and gain a little bit of distance but with this little extra distance because if you're thinking about like the actual perimeter of how big this car with a little bit extra is it is definitely long enough for you to get up the stairs and make the window 
But as I said before, killers are going to be double backing a lot. So be aware of that and be extra aware when it's a shorter killer. When it's not, if it's a super tall killer, you know, say it was like Plague wearing the beach outfit where the the seashell goes up super tall. If that was, if that was the case, yes, you could wait right here because you could literally see like the beach thing here and she's not going to be able to swing from here all the way in and hit you. So, And if the beach thing is there, even if you medium vault, like you'd be able to make it back around again. So you'd want to do that running technique if it's like a Sadako or something and you really want to play the wall. And then jump it and then go back around and do the same thing. But you really want to use, if you're coming this way, you can use the pallet to greed to get back up to the window. But if you're coming, if you're if the killer forced you this way, you can use that pallet to greed. Use the length of this actual car itself. To make it back up around and then use the window if you want or you can just have fun greeting the pallet you can also do that because if you greet it hard enough like if you're running around this way and you come if the killer expects you to throw it and they go all the way around the long way like super round they don't just like stop and then come through because if they stop and come through you can make the window but if you're coming here and they and they go all the way around the long way you could probably make it all the way back around to that pallet again and then you can greet it again and then get to the window <laughs> But this is genuinely one of the more interesting tiles because of this mind game right here. I have no legit answer where this works every time because it depends on the killer's height. <laughs> but that does make it a really fun tile nonetheless. And it's one of the strongest ones that can appear on Wrecker's Yard by itself. Vampire. <laughs> Not the libraries and roads. I got fucking stuck! Oh my god! Thank fuck. The getting stuck might have actually like saved me. Low key. Yay! Jump it again. Why am I getting stuck, dude? I'm looping way too tight. I make it. No! If I was a male survivor, I'd have. El Thingador. <laughs> no! I stubbed my toe. <laughs> Run this way and then come back. Lane Jim. Ah! No. <laughs> I want to wear that stuff. <laughs> like I was. This is terrible. Oh, there's no pallet here, boo. You should love that. Let's loop this thing, that'll be fun. It's a great idea, right? And double backed. Is this big enough? He got fucked by the video game. He didn't even do it wrong. And the best thing is, he'll be farther up enough for me to. Anyway, I'll have to do this. Oh! Dang, I won't make it around now. I thought he still had the thing, I didn't hear him put it away. Dang. I might have been able to throw that. <laughs> Alright, part two. Here we fucking go. Can I jump it? Yay. I guessed right, because I figured she was going to not double back this time. This time? Damn. <laughs> Yay. Oh god, I've been spotted. Damn it. I tried to juke. That was not the scenario to do it. Interesting, how should I play this against her here? Obviously running out wide, but... Should I jump early or she can expect this? 
No! Should have baited it harder. Damn. I don't know what the fuck that was. She's gonna get a hit here, damn it. Slower. I stuck. What the fuck? Yeah. She got auto aimed into the wall. The game paid me back. Oh god, here we go. Read the pallet, right? Ah. No, it didn't work. I don't know if I did too many. That might have been too many. Ah, oh, those. I wonder if he even meant to do that. Maybe he did, actually. I think he only had one charge. I don't have a pallet here. He fucking vaulted. Damn it. That's not a throw? Throw it. She's on death hook already anyway. Throw a pallet though, exclamation pallet throw. I knew I was gonna take the hit. If I didn't, they could have waited it out and then just hit me anyway. Oh god. Mind game yourself. They didn't mind game, bro. Ah! Cool. That'd be amazing. That was weird. A good shit. <laughs> this is a pretty strong two tiles to have connected. Oh, dude. <laughs> it's hilarious. Dang it, I only had one. I tried. Can you greet it? Yay! I should have ran the other way, though. The locker play! I wasn't sure that would work. Mm, yes! Can I make this? No, I don't. My dumbass. Oh, God. That lasted a while though. He done like chased me all the way over. Oh god. I thought he was gonna like double back. Oh my god. <laughs> ah! You're trying to juice this fucking thing, you ready? Hey, it was only the tombstone, it wasn't the... He, like, cannot get it again, right? Is he still chasing me? No, he's not. The fook. Oh, God. No! <laughs> I tried! <laughs> That's a really hard curve, too.
Oh god, I forgot they fucking changed that. I knew that from last time. Read it again. It doesn't matter. Yes, it did. Did not enough. <laughs> oh fuck. Damn it. I don't think I make this. That was dumb as hell. I should have thrown that. Or loop the small side of it. <laughs> Why does it slide all the way out there? Dang it. <laughs> oh, I think he double backed. So this is the worst version of the buses. There are three buses. This is the broken bus. I call it the broken bus, the mid bus, and the fun bus, or the best bus. Uh, the fun bus is the best one. I think the uh, the fun bus is not the one with the window here, but the one that has the window in the side here. This one is basically completely dependent on the killer mind gaming themselves for you to get value off of this tile here. This would be one of those ones where you greed the pallet, they went around, and then when you were coming around this way, they saw you at the last second, sometimes they'll go around that way and mind game the moan self again, which gives you a chance to come back to this pallet. If you came back to this pallet, say they went around again on the outside, then you can come back to this thing again. The thing is, is both of these are pretty unsafe if they don't mind game themselves that hard. This one is a bit safer than it looks because the killer has to get probably about to here. But even then, if they got to about to here, then if you medium vaulted, then they could double back. And even if they double back, they'd probably either have to be playing this pallet again right here, or if they double backed, they could push you around this way, and then you might not make it back to that pallet again. So usually, if I am stuck on the inside of this, I usually do this type of scenario, where you're running back and forth, because that way if the killer pushes in, you wait to vault to the last second anyway, and if the killer did push in to, like, say, here, if the killer was here, you would still make it on the running vault, and if the killer was in, you'd see which way they pushed around, and if, whichever way they pushed around, at least you'd make it back to this mind game, or at least make it back to the other pallet. But the sad thing is, is there is no ideal pathing you're looking for, because if it went around this way, and then the killer went around this way, then if I was coming here, the killer would obviously just go around that way. There'd be no reason for the killer to run all the way around the long way and push back into this. That also being said, makes it a more fun tile to get value off of because you're running in here and then the killer goes that way and then you're like, huh? And then you're coming in here and then you push into here and you're actually going to run in and the killer doubles back. So, but th that's the problem with this tile is this tile is completely unavoidable to get yourself into 50 50 mind games which is bad if you're looking for consistent chase and you're getting tunneled on death hook but it's very good if you're just looking to have a really fun tile to sort of mess around on Woo! let's go loop this bus no i didn't loop tight enough Ah, no! 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 Greet it! Yes! Can I make the window? I don't know how to make the window. Sag. Ah! Those oh, fast faults are... I forgot! They're buffed! Oh my god, I got the broken bus. Boo. Can I make it? The broken bus. <laughs> that was funny. Run to the pog log. It's not pog log. They messed up this fun bus, man. Is it like always like this now? Oh. 
Yay! Value! No! I stubbed my toe. Alright. I am not on death hook and Joel was. Let's go. Yay! Gonna make it all the way over here. Yay! Oh, I'm sorry. He was on this gen right here. I run away from this. <laughs> the broken bus sucks. It is funny to try to get value off of, though. Ooh. I was like, is Daph still on? Back to the the bad bus. I call this the bad bus, but it's really fun. Can I make it? Yes! No! <laughs> it's so close. Dang. You were supposed to swing. Oh god. Oh god it I'm trying to figure out how to loop this fucking tile now. And I fucked it all up. That was terrible. <laughs> no Well, that doesn't feel like good. Good shit. Oh god, I knew it. It was too late. Yes! Damn it. Alright, so here is the mid bus that I like to call it. This is the, in my opinion, I think this is the middle strength bus because I think the one the, with the window right here in the middle is the strongest. Now this is a very interesting one because if you're looping this, especially if you want to connect it to the window, coming in here will always result in a 50-50. And if you're coming around this way, it is best if they respect it and not respect it by going around that way, obviously, but if they respect it like that, then you can jump the window and you probably gonna make it all the way back around to that pallet the problem is if they don't respect it this is a very close window right here and you can juke it sometimes but you'd have to come all the way out here to sort of see if they're coming in and this isn't really a line of sight for you to be able to get a running vault so if you're staying here it is sort of playing with fire because they could just moonwalk in and then swing right here and you're just going to be doing a medium vault so you might get hit it is a drop down but it's not a crazy low drop down. And it is a medium vault, so with a drop down on a medium vault, usually your hitbox stays there a bit longer, just because your hitbox a lot of times won't move until you're completely gone. So it takes like a half a second longer than even normal um, from a medium vault. So with that one, you gotta be really careful. Usually with this bus, a lot of times I'm just greeting this pallet over and over and over. They'll push you either way. No matter which way they push you, if they respect it, we're still doing this. But if I'm running this way, I pretty much never go in here every now and then I will just for fun and then try to win some 50 50s because then the second you see that it's really short and if you medium vault you're not gonna make it around the entire length of this bus back to the pallet so usually I'm only jumping that window if we were already looping this rock this way is we're looping this rock this way then we can come right in and we'll have to go around that way which means we'll have to go all the way around which possibly can get us back to this now in theory if somebody was chasing you from really far away like they're like the length there then yes yeah, so you could jump this then push around they'd be pushing around pushing around and then you could jump it again this is not mind gameable because you can see through there so they would push around again but i'll be completely honest i'm almost never in the scenario where i'm just being running towards this from a big head start because a lot of times the mid bus or the or this particular bus will spawn kind of exactly like this like out in the out in the 
the corner. So how are we gonna get a big head start from the killer from out here? So that's why usually with this one, I end up not in the position to actually be able to profit off of vaulting this window and only using that window as a 50-50 mind game or well, against a Bubba specifically, I suppose, if they like use their saw, then yes, perfect time, use the window. If they bonk, because now you just gained a ton of distance. If you gained a ton of distance this way, then yeah, then you could use the window and jump it. But you'd have to have a lot of distance gained. Besides that, I would just expect to run around the rock and then wait for them to be push, uh, looping you this way, and that's when you would jump the window. Looping this, and then bang. But this, as I said, will result in a 50-50 mind game most of the time, so be careful. Don't throw the pallet, Leon. Don't throw it. Yes! Go walk around. I was gonna vault it, but. Jump this one, because we gain the distance. <laughs> yes! <laughs> you double back? No, you didn't. I'm running the wrong way, though. I gotta like fucking turn this thing around. <laughs> I'm gonna try to loop it once and jump the. I was gonna try to jump the window. <laughs> Jump it. <laughs> Fucker. <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah, got the Noah. <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> Low power. Where is it here? It's just already gone. I'm gonna greet it. Damn it. <laughs> God damn it! I was trying to sucker her into hitting me because I had BT. Where did she go? Oh, she's still over there. She did not fall for that whatsoever. <laughs> Dang, I was afraid to like, greet it again because she didn't fall for it at all the first time. No, she got me. Yes, I don't know if I make it a whole time again, though. On to the next one. Yay, we got him with the fake out. Now we can find the fun bus. Let's go.
definitely. <laughs> it was a silent song, but he was definitely tickling. Oh my god, that was so fucking close. And I'm hindered. Oh damn, I tried to greet it. I should have thrown it. <laughs> so this one is what should be the best bus. So if you get the best bus, the window spawns right here. But we just loaded this map up over and over for 35 minutes trying to get the best bus so now this is the best one that we're going to be able to deal with so when you get the best bus you get the pallet to spawn right here instead and the window is right here instead now the reason i like that a lot more is because with this one when you're greeting this even if you greet it this way if the killer respects and goes around it sort of helps them and they're going to beat us when we get all the way back around but the fun bus when you jump it from this angle right here, it's safe enough, especially because you can see the killer right here. Because you can see like right when the killer gets to this point. If you if you can see at this point, it's safe enough to jump. Because if they go all the way back around and all you did was jump and held forward, you would make it all the way back around and be able to make it back to this pallet right here. And more specifically, if you're running it in this way and the killer respect the pallet, then you can make this jump right here into this window. Now the other thing is if you're coming around this way, and this is where another 50-50 can occur, but it, once again, is stronger than it looks because you have that pallet right there. So if you're coming around this way and you jump because the window's going to be right here, and you're waiting, so you, you see the red stain, and if you jump right here when you see the red stain, once you make it to the other side of that window, even if he doubles back, he has to go around that tree, and you just landed right here, then you can make it to this pallet again. If you make it to this pallet again, say that they they go around again, one of two things can happen when they go around again. When they go around, you can either hold forward and make it right back around to this same mind game right here, because this is a very safe window if you run it this way. Even if you run right this, even if the killer is like right here, when you jump that window, if they come back around this way, they're not gonna get you in time. By the time you jumped around, pushed around, and you'd be able to jump this window again, you turn right in here, and then get right to there. And at least, and if they, same thing, if they double back, you'd push you right back into that pallet again. But right here, from either side, when you're jumping from this side and the killer's right there, or you're on, and the, or the killer's right here and you're jumping on this side, it is such a long wall that it is extremely safe that even if you jump and they push you around, you can push around that way, come right back around here, and come right back to this thing. Now, another fun thing to sort of try, if you've been mixing up the killer and they know you're gonna greed the pallet and they, they go around the outside and they know you're just gonna hold forward, because if that was the case, you're not gonna make it. That's when it becomes really fun when you go in right here you wait for the killer to go around the second the killer goes around you run right back here and you jump the window again <laughs> now all that play is being possible is why i consider this one the best bus as a or in the fun bus i call this the best or the fun bus as opposed to this one because with this one the actually connecting the window back and forth to the pallet is sort of not possible on top of the fact that you can only jump this window one way so if you do jump this in the mind game you can't do like a medium vault back in you're just on the bottom of that and there's only one really way you can loop this where that window gets profit whereas this window you can loop from this way and jump it you can come around this back way and get the running vault at an angle this way and that's the cool thing too is when you turn the camera this way to look at the window right here that literally gives you the point where you can see if they double backed or not anyway because if you see the red stain that come in that you can just jump and make it to that pallet so this seems like a 50 50 but it's not quite as like a risky 50 50 as it really seems and then if you're coming around this way same thing like you can greed this pallet and make it to this window or if they'd push you around and you're over here same thing if you push around and do this you can either jump this and run around and they might have to go all the way around depends on where they were or you could medium vault back in and have a uh, pallet to either run to so i definitely think this is the strongest version of the three buses and it's definitely the most fun we were talking about the other day like you go to work right you can go to work and not say one word all day and you'll have some people be like I hate working with that guy he's so boring or you go to work and you talk to everybody i hate working with that guy he talks too much you know what i mean like literally no matter who you are or what you do somebody will not like you for it There's no point in, like, l getting upset over someone doesn't like you. Who cares? I'm kind of like that with actors. Where I'm like, this guy's a good actor, but I don't like his acting that much, you know?
There's two I think about like that. Ed Ed Norton and Mark Ruffalo. Both of them are great actors, but I just don't like their acting that much. But I know they're great actors, like I can tell. Mark Ruffalo, I've actually met in real life. Uh, when I worked at Maple on 42nd Street, he was at a, uh, a buyout party. That was cool. And he was very nice. Oh, yeah! Both Hulks! I never even thought about that until you just said that. That's hilarious. <laughs> That's fucking great. Oh, my God. And I have another setup here. Swing. Watch my skill. Unmind gameable window. Don't you love it? I do. I love it. What's not to love about that? I fucked up. Swing. Dang. Dang, it's blocked now. No, it's not. What the fuck? Ah! Thank you. You have a fucking tarp over here, don't you? Yeah, you do! I see it! Ah! Can make it all the way around? I'm kind of fooked here. Actually. <laughs> Dang. Oh God. I thought I had the other fun bus. I should have just jumped it. I know I'm a big old fucking mutt. Dang. Yes, my skill was definitely the reason that worked. Did she vault? I didn't think so. Oh, this palace down. No! So this one right here is Shame Hill. Unless you have bounce lining, this is pretty much completely useless. Every now and then you'll get a tile that's close enough. So like this one right here, we actually do have a tile that's close enough. And it's on the right side of it that we can get down this hill without staggering and be able to make it right to this pallet. So if the killer was chasing us from this way and we just for some reason wanted to use Shame Hill, we could totally come up this way. Wait for the killer to come all the way up, and once they got to about there, you could run down this, and then come over here. Sometimes you can also get a window, and if you get a window close enough to a shame hill, you might even have it be the perfect distance where you can still sort of get the running drop vault, because you can actually get a running vault while not running full speed. That's why you can get running vaults versus Skull Merchant, even though you're hindered. Now, like I said, it does have to be the right distance, because if you jumped here, and you're holding forward, this might be too, this would be too close of a window if this was a window. For you to get your momentum enough to be a running vault but if it's just that perfect feel good distance where you can run down jump off take two steps and running vault in sometimes it's even facing shack this way on this map specifically and then you can actually get use out of this and if you wanted to get use out of this way the best way would obviously have the window or the pallet be on the long side because that makes the killer have to run longer around this way and it takes the mind game away because if the pallet or the window is on the side or the side that way it gives killer the opportunity to sort of push off and then come here and cut you off to this way but that does not give the killer the opportunity if the window or the pal is on this side over here because there's no way for the killer to sort of like mind game you off and go the other way so ideally you would want it to be right there this one is okay as i said because even if the killer went to mind game you here and jump off you would still be closer to the pallet 
you have to basically you have to force the killer to walk around the rock anyway, and you're on the side that you don't stagger on. And there's two sides you don't stagger on on this shame hill. And if you if you get the side you don't stagger on, actually, then you won't get balanced landing. But the other side is right here. How you don't stagger while getting down. It's one on each corner. Now it's interesting because other shame there's one shame hill. I think it's the one on the Yamaoka estate realm. I'm pretty sure that one doesn't have one where you can actually jump off at any place without staggering, and other ones only have one. But the Auto Haven Wreckers realm one has the two, one on each corner. They're easy to remember because they're on each corner and they're easy to see. You don't have to go looking for them. Because some of them, like Irie of the Crows, you have to like do some madness walking zigzag down the middle to get it. Whereas these ones are pretty, pretty easy and pretty simple to be able to actually use. And especially if you're going to do it in chase, if there's something close by for you to utilize. Have duck tech, I knew I wasn't gonna make it. Oh my god. I was not paying attention. I was literally not looking at my screen. Damn. <laughs> oh, they have bamboozle. No! No! That sucks! No! No! I've never been so bummed to see Bamboozle. This sucks, man. No! <laughs> so that leaves us with the Killer Shack. Now, the Killer Shack spawns on every single map. They're all slightly different. This one has literally, it's not to be like this one's not special in any way. This is like the standard Killer Shack. This one, the McMillan, and the ones on, on the Cold Wind Farm pretty much never change. You might have like one window instead of two open in the back. Now, ideally, how you'd want to loop Killer Shack if the killer didn't do any mind games, right? You'd push around this way. The killer would either vault or push you around. You come around this way. This is considering no mind games. You'd vault again. Killer push you around. Do it again. Then you'd vault a third time. Windows blocked now. And you either leave the tile or a killer vault a third time and now the window's completely blocked. That's when you come and throw the pallet. That's why people talk about getting your three vaults and then throwing the pallet. Obviously, the killer doesn't want that to happen, so they're going to do some crazy mind games. And there's a lot of different mind games they can try. And there's a few uh, mind games I go out of my way to try to avoid, admittedly. First mind game being, obviously, you got to wait. And this is why you would want to wait until the last second to vault. With running vaults that are mind gameable, you always want to wait till the absolute last second. You don't want to press vault here unless you're against a doctor. And even against a doctor, they might expect that and they might shock and then come on the outside and you can't vault back in. Obviously, you'd run to the pallet, but that would just be the scenario with vaults because you can vault after getting shocked as long as you had already gotten the prompt of running vault right there. As long as you've already hit the button during the prompt, you you will jump in, uh, before you got shocked. So if it's one of those things where you're just like running at it and it's not shack, it's just like a window, and then you're just like spamming it. Like, come on, besides doctor, in that scenario, you pretty much always want to wait till you hit the button to running vault until the last scenario. You can't slam into it because then you would medium vault like that. You just want to wait until the last second. So I'm waiting till about there is when I hit it. The last second I can. Because that would still give you the opportunity to running vault if you needed to. But also give you the opportunity to not have pressed the button already if the killer d does double back. Now, if this gen right here is in the middle, so it sort of gets rid of what I like to do to avoid one specific mind game, if you can't see, is running a little bit wide. You don't want to run too wide because if you run a little bit too wide and the killer does do the mind game, you can't cut back in towards the window. But in the mind game I'm talking about is a lot of times if you do this, and you don't want to be standing here because Killer could walk by and swing through the pallet, but you don't want to be standing like right here either because this is too close to actually get a running vault. And if the killer pretends like they're going to go outside, they come here and then they double back and come in. They can catch, catch you doing one of these numbers and you're like, oh crap, medium vault, and then you get hit. So I try to avoid that specific mind game, and usually I run it a little bit wide. Obviously, the generator is a little bit in the way, but if you're running a little bit wide, that way if they did that mind game or they came out and then came back in, then you could still save by cutting back towards the window and make the running vault. And if they don't mind game, if they didn't mind game back in, then you could run around right to the back of Shack again. And Shack is the back of Shack is usually what I like to run the most anyway, because you get the free bonus sometimes with the killer not realizing you went to the back of Shack and then just leaving. You're like, hey, free one chase. But also you're utilizing the biggest 
portion of shack really by running just this big side they can't mind game it because you can see through it and you can even loop once or twice because sometimes you're too far ahead to try to vault this and you're already giving them a thing where you're either going to wait at this window for them to catch up and i don't like losing distance on the killer yeah or you're just going to end up vaulting it too soon and the killer can run around there which will force us into a scenario where we'll have to like throw the pallet that's why i like looping the back of shack because it can force the killer to be closer to us where we can see it and a double back would be drastic because if they double backed when we loop the shack like twice they'd be like all the way in here and then have to double back that would just be drastic and sort of a waste of time not, and looping the back of shack isn't always going to work you're not going to loop the back of shack and it's like a blight or something because obviously they can just fly right in and then hit you but most of the time it's just a good opportunity to just continuously profit specifically off of winning a mind game if the killer did double back there again then we can come around this way and then we're back a shack same place as we were before. If the killer pushes you around this way, you don't have to run into Shack. You can run around this way. And go around this way. Now you're back in the beginning, right? And when you're running around here as well, when you whip around the corner, this is a checkpoint. It's a moving checkpoint. Same with this, because you're going to want your camera to be the first thing around the corner here, so you can see if the killer vaults. Same thing, you come around the corner, you want your camera to be the first thing, because if he vaults again, you're still in position to be able to make it around and, and get your running vault, just like as we did. But it's gonna. But as long as you can hit it. Now that brings up a good point right there as well. A lot of times I see too many people playing too safe, running too wide, too wide, and then coming in. You want to run the shortest amount of distance possible, and by doing that, you want to run a little bit out and then a little bit in, the way I just did. You don't want to run these huge boxy, and you don't want to run all the way out here just to be safe. Sometimes, if you once again, if you're coming around here, you can run a little bit wide if you have like a bigger head start. So if you're coming around this way, then you wouldn't be able to see him at all. That would be the only scenario where you're running this way. You'd run alone a little bit longer to see if they even came out of shack. And if they came out of shack, that's when you're like, okay. And then same thing, you wouldn't want to run a box. You'd want to run an angle. Because if you waited a little bit and you came out to here, you might get hit if you ran from here, a straight line to here, and then a straight line into here. Because talking about geometry here, how the hypotenuse is, is shorter than the other two sides combined. So you don't want to run like these two sides combined from here to here. If you're out here already, you'd want to run a little bit and then cut at an angle in. Because you can still running vault at an angle like that. And that will save you distance and might be the difference between you getting hit or not. On those 50-50s when the distance is really close. But you really don't have to run out that wide to get the running vault. You really have to run to like here and get that running vault. One thing I will say about Doctor as well, if it's a Doctor, never throw Shack Pallet against a Doctor. Because if you throw a Shack Pallet against a Doctor and you stay in Shack, if you're right here, they shock you and then immediately vault the window. You can't vault that. You can't do anything to get past them and you're way out of position and you will get hit so doctor is the one of the only killers where you're like never throw it unless the one scenario rises where you're running here you're about to get shocked and you throw it that is same if you're running this way and you throw it and same thing if you do throw it and you're in that scenario get out of shack you do not want to sit in shack and give that doctor the opportunity to shock you and then step through the door that being said as well with the back of shack you do have these little windows that you can look through so this right here is a great checkpoint this right here is a great checkpoint for both sides because you can see them walk through and you can also see the left doorway on the left through the left window so they can't really climb on you that way. And if you're right here, you can see through that window, through that doorway anyway. So there's no possible way for them to gain any. They'd walk that way, you'd see them and you come through. I suppose if you got if you took a head start a little bit too fast, they could mind game back in there, but you're always risking a little bit of that. That's actually the biggest reason why I never get caught double vaulting. Because a lot of times double vaulting might be the right play in Shaq if they anticipated you doing that. But I'm just scared to death of them doing that thing. Where they vaulted, you double vault back in, and then they moonwalk back in, and then they hit you. And it's like, dang it, I shouldn't have done that. So that one total mind game stops me from doing double vaults on a lot of tiles, to be in, to be completely honest. But specifically Shaq and, like, short wall slash PW gyms, those two I really try not to double vault because it is possible to get mind gamed that way as well. One last thing I wanted to talk about Shaq as well is don't rule this out, but sometimes you can get here, use this pallet greed as a way to make it then to the window. So, because if you pallet greed this... You can also make it to the window, and you might juke it, but if you juke it, you might not make it all the way back around. But sometimes, in the just perfect amount of distance, when you greet it and they come in, you can still make this window. So make it back to Shaq, and then greet it. Greet it. And then jump it. And then hold W. So don't rule out that play either, and thinking you just have to throw that, and that there's no plays. They might respect it, and then you might be able to make it to here. Or at least juke it and make it somewhere else.
One more additional thing to point out with Shack is if you hit, it's really with all Shacks, but with Riker's Yard Shack, you're gonna have the generator in the middle a lot. And now this can come in handy versus like a Wesker or a Huntress or something. Those ones where if you fake the window, but they don't go for the fake, like they didn't throw the hatchet and Wesker didn't go for the thing. A lot of times, and Nemesis as well, a lot of times you get caught in between this dead zone of the window and the pallet versus projectile killer where you're kind of like, oh, and you don't want to go through here because it's a bottleneck, you'll get hit. But having the generator here, a lot of times it makes it a little bit trickier to get the running vault. Not quite as tricky as some people think like it's really not in your way but it does get in people's heads every now and then and then it'll do some wonky pathing to go around but you don't need to do wonky pathing but having this really is helpful sometimes when you're in that projectile killer and you juke the window and then you have that little thing to sort of hide in the way to force them around one way or the other and make a play sometimes you can even loop around this thing if you really want but this is asking to get hit. The killer would make, have to make a huge error for you to actually loop around this for a second and then get to the pallet or, or the window. The killer would have to make a huge error, but killers can make mistakes and that is a possible play. So it's worth pointing out. Oh wait, they want? I see. I haven't done a fucking 1v1 killer shack in forever. And then add in another one. I don't think I'll make this. I can get hit. No, oh, they cheated. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> That's hilarious. Shack. I would get hit here, though. I think I would have gotten hit anyway. I thought I was going to get hit there. What the fuck? <laughs> Run around the thingy. Can we make it around the back again and then to the window? Path thing. No, I won't. I did. What the fuck? Don't throw the shag pallet. <laughs> what the fuck is going on? <laughs> They're like, stop running Shaq. I'm running the back, though. They're like, but basement's here. Can they hit me through that? I was walking into it. I'm trying to walk into it to see if they can hit me. Boo! But I've made that. <laughs> hey, dumbass. Oh, God. I wanted to hit the skill check and jump the window at the same time. Oh, I'm bad! <laughs> I wanted to get it. Can I make this? I don't think I looped tight enough. I did. Male privilege vault. Yeah! Dang it. I wanted them to tap it. <laughs> I'm gonna get put in the basement here. That <laughs> sucks. Damn it. <laughs> but if Automod wouldn't catch like very like offensive language maybe in another language, you know what I mean? 
That's like the only thing I could even be scared of and I'd be like, whoa, slow down. Because I'm trying to think of like very extreme situations where I would like have to ban somebody. No! I'm not going to throw it. <laughs> it went for it. Yes! The squeeze. Ah! Oh, what the fuck? <laughs> you can go hit yourself. Ready for this swing. Yay. Got him. Dang. I thought he was going to go for the whip. I wanted to watch him nay nay. Oh, damn. He knows the ways of the... Of the drag the mouse. This tile is a fucking nightmare. I want to try it out, I guess, really more. Does he have bamboozle? I don't know. It is not. Oh no, I got fucking stuck because I looped it too tight. And then I don't know what the fuck he did. He did some weird shit. I do like that skin, but Spirit has too many good skins, so I have decided not to even want it. Any longer. No! Swing. I haven't seen him do anything but play Bite, though. There's nothing wrong with that, but I don't think I've ever seen him play Survivor or another killer besides Blight. Now that I think about it. Oh god, there's no pallet there, I just remembered. <laughs> it's really funny. But he likes it. He thinks it's really funny. Curl in. Swing? Damn it. He didn't swing. Where do I go now? Let's go. Can still be. Alright, let me get off. Dude, that guy got hosed. Let me double back. He got auto aimed into the fucking generator, dude. That sucks. I wanted to fuck around with the little shell. It didn't work out. We can make another round, right? Yeah, I was hoping. Can I make it back to the fun bus? That'd be hilarious. Or here, a fucking A. Damn. So now we gotta talk about chaining tiles. We look, talk about something called O penises, uh, which kind of started as a joke where you talk about like the OP level, like, or like if you're gonna say something like the tallness of that building is very tall or the tallness of that tree is very tall like it was basically we we're just trying to be memeing like that but we instead of tallness we said the opness as a joke one day that opness is huge so naturally all we heard was opness and that's how we now we call it we call it opness so this right here would be a perfect example of an opness and what i'm talking about this is is you can chain all three of these together which is kind of absurd this is a very strong setup and on this map specifically you're going to find these more likely in these back areas because a, a multiple tiles can spawn back here sometimes they're not really connectable but most of the time in these back areas away from shack is connectable and they'll usually be one area connectable directly to shack this time we didn't get quite as a strong area connectable to shack specifically but we were given something absurdly strong in the meantime and that's basically how this map always goes is there's going to be something op somewhere you just got to go looking for it on this map and this right here would be a perfect example because what is the killer supposed to do here? They push us around this way, and I can either go up to this if there's a pallet there, or if they push us around back the other way, we're back to this tile. If we go to this tile and the killer respects it, I can just literally hold forward and come to this thing. Let me jump over to this. Killer's pushing us around. 
right? Even funnier if we went right here and the killer lost the 50-50. Even if the killer didn't win the 50-50, we might have enough distance to get here. And if the killer respected that, then we're back to here. And if the killer tries to go around the long way like he did last time, we could just come around to this, do the same thing. You could even loop this one if you want, add a little spice to it, you know, and then push around back to this. Like, this is just like the perfect example of like, what is the killer supposed to do here? Because this is just... He has to respect this pallet. He doesn't have to. But even if even if that pallet wasn't there, this would be a strong area because you could jump this, right? The killer push you around that way or they push you around this way. This is a long wall, right? And then you could run this way if the killer was pushing you around, come towards this. And if this truck was right here, same thing. Right? You could either just loop the truck and go right back towards the wall. Or if they pushed you around this way, this creates a 50-50 opportunity where you're looping this. But not really because if you're looping this, they're expecting you to loop back towards the pallet. That's why you'd be hugging it tight. Because if you give away that you're going to go to the window right here, you wouldn't want, they would see it and that would cause this 50-50 right here where they would be right here waiting for you to do it. But at the same time, if you're over here and you saw them leave that truck tile and come to about here, then you would expect them to get the 50-50 and then you could profit again. And even if you lost the 50-50 where they came in, you would have this pallet here for them to try to game. And even better, you could not have that be a possibility at all by looping this as tight as possible and then at the last second cutting off to this. Because now the killer was looping as tight as you. They're trying to loop as tight as you. Because if they're not looping as tight as you, they're giving up ground. So the killer comes around here and around here. And then it's too late. They're like, oh, I have to go all the way around here if I want to win this. And this is basically what you're going to look for. Now, the one thing you don't want to do when you're chaining tiles is just immediately make it obvious that you're going to chain the tiles. Because you won't waste enough of the killer's time. So if I saw this set up immediately, I wouldn't just like immediately go to chain this tile. I would act like I didn't see those windows. And I would try to just game this once or twice. And then the second I see the killer respect the pallet if they respect the pallet that's when you go to game the tile because we want the killer not to or just give up and be like that's too strong a tile i don't want to do that and even this like we were just saying about 50 50s even this is like an unsafe tile this would be a very unsafe tile to sort of use as what would be considered an op penis but it's close enough and that pallet's so safe that even, pretty much no matter which way we went it'd be close enough for us to make it back to the tile right back here Obviously, they could do some double backs, but even if they did some double back here with your camera around, then you could come back here, and same thing. They push you around here. At some point, they're going to have to dedicate and push you around the actual tile itself. And once they do, you're back to the you're back to the pallet. And if they respect that, you're back to this. So, like I said, you want to do sort of not one tile at a time, but you want to do like one loop on each one. They, you want them to think you're looping this tile. So you don't want to just immediately cut into that. You want to do like one loop come around they're like okay he's just looping that and that's when you hit him with it All right and then same thing you can come up to here because they might think that you're going to jump the tile and go back that way but if you come back to here and game this then we come back to this there might be two window vaults but now we're over here right and if the killer tries to uh, game this one and pushes us this way now we can just run all the way either jump that window or we can even test it and see if we can make it all the way this way because then they'd have to go all the way around that way and if they double back we push around this way and if they double back this way we have another tile right here we could even use so chaining tiles is like the most valuable possible thing you can do on this map because it's just common tiles in the first place and once you know how the how the tiles work you got to be thinking about the max distance of the tile so even if i hadn't dropped that pallet the distance of the killer would be the right from me to him and it's less than that it's less from me to the tree because it's really from the tree around this corner around this corner then to the tree it's not a straight shot right through the middle so thinking about that if you had to walk around and then walk around like even if they're on the other side here i might even be able to make it to this pallet right here and, and it looks far away it is far away, but with a map with common tiles, you got to think about that. And that's why pre-dropping becomes prominent as well, because if you come over here and you pre-drop, then the length of this tile, they're pushing you all the way around. Now, that's even stretchable right to this one. And on this one, same thing. If you had this one and they didn't break it, they would break that. But if you had this one dropped and they didn't break it, now think of how long this is. If I had this dropped and I came around this way, right, and I come, and we can obviously jump through pallets. So if we were coming around this way, and the killer, see, this becomes a mind game. And if, and if the killer loses a 50-50 around this side, the killer has to push us around, which we can either jump that. And now this is definitely long enough to come this way. And the funniest part about this is when we push into this, this is no longer just a tile. Now we just, or just a spot. Now we can jump through that. And that's why the killer would break that one specifically. But that is why people would pre-drop something to connect other tiles. Because now this tile would be connectable all the way to that tile over there, essentially. Just because of the length of this. 
is such a long tile that I would be able to make it to here, be on the length of this tile, would definitely, if like, if, if the distance between this tile was the distance between me and the killer, like, that is easily enough distance, probably to even make it all the way back to that bus. And that's why people would end up pre-dropping, but that's why I think it's funny to get the same value off of not pre-dropping, but them just respecting and going around it, and you're like, ha got the same value without the pre-drop but pre-dropping is very valuable when you were on death hook specifically pre-dropping you don't want to like loop and try to get the uh and try to get the stun because then if they do respect it then you lost distance when you threw the pallet that's when you'd want to get up to here pre-drop it and then use the distance of the entire tile put together with the with the pallet in the middle connecting the two making it a longer tile and that's when you can use it to connect it to pretty much like anything on the map Dang it. I'm actually gonna get value out of that fucking window. That's hilarious. No! But we're all in death look anyway, he would just die faster. I was expecting that. Is this still here? No, it's not! <laughs> this is still here though. My god, this is a really strong setup though. Dang, I thought you were a vaulter. Why you know a vaulter? A vaulting Walter. There's so many chainable tiles this time. My god. Will I make this? And then greet it? Yeah! Oh, damn. I overgreeted. I'm a greedy fucker. Uh-oh. Nobody's going for the unhook. And I'm fucking actually hindered right now. Oops. The tile is so useful. Well, I guess you can call that use out of it, right? That's like the most use I've ever gotten out of that tile. All right, so the strongest loop on this map, you guessed it, it's whatever the best RNG you could find on the map was. Most of the time, I'd see three out of every four games on Wreckers Yard. I'd say there is a one singular tile that is not the strongest, like, oh, penis on the map. There's usually, like, two or three. There's Back there is a usual suspect area. Back there is a usual suspect area of getting chainable tiles. Back there is a... The most likely suspect area because there's just so many tiles that can spawn that a lot of times you can get it chained but if you're looking for one specific tile just to see on a map that's complete rng i would say the strongest most consistent tile is whichever tile you have to shack now this time we were just talking about it we didn't get something super close and super helpful to shack we had those cars over there uh we already threw that pal earlier when we were trying to explain stuff but the reason it would be the tile that is close to shack is because say you add a pallet or a window here that now means Shaq has two windows or two pallets, right? Because you have the window and the pallet here, but then you also have the pallet here. So we were talking about running the back of Shaq, but the thing about running the back of Shaq before was you have to run it with the intention of always getting to either this play here or once that play has been used up, throwing the pallet. But say we had another pallet right here, which I think we did earlier. If uh, Say the, the pallet spawned right here. It doesn't have to be a pallet, it could be a window, but say there's a pallet right here. Now Shaq has two pallets. Now you can throw this one and you don't have to worry about it because if, if you lost the 50-50 here, it doesn't matter because we had another pallet right here, right? If there was a tile on this side. If there was a tile on the front of the shack, you can just connect it right to shack window. Same thing as we were saying before because you don't want to just connect it because you want to loop and a few times see if the killer greets the pallet. Say this was a pallet right here, an unsafe pallet even. Even if it was unsafe, it's fine because then you could loop it right in the shack, right? And then whichever way they push you, it doesn't matter because you could go to the back of shack. 
And once you come to the back of Shag, then it doesn't matter because you, you could run all the way around, essentially. You don't have to run right here into the middle and play that. You could run all the way around to this front part again. And then we're playing this part again. Right here. And then right into Shag. If you have a tile on this part of Shag, say there was a pallet right here, same thing. Shag now just has two pallets, one on each side. Essentially, this has a pallet and that has a pallet. So... Obviously, running back a shack, same thing. Or say the opposite. Say you were in that scenario where the killer specifically did push you around this way and you didn't want to throw the pallet and he pushed you around here. And then we get into this one scenario where you go to either jump this or fake it. You can fake it pretty much knowing immediately that if the 50-50 worked, you're going to make it to another pallet. Or if you had enough distance where you didn't have to fake it, where you just had enough distance and you didn't want to... Because we, we've all been there where we're like, the killer is all the way out there and we're here and we're like, eh, I'm not going to make it all the way back around. I'm not going to make the running vault because the killer is going to hit me if I go for the running vault. And I'm not going to make the medium vault either. Perfect scenario again. Then you're holding forward and you have another pallet here that you can mess around with. And if you had a pallet here, same thing. The length of this to this, if we did have a pallet here, is enough. Or if, if you left right at the right time, you're back in shack. And if that didn't work, you have another pallet right here. So it doesn't even matter. Like, even if this pallet is even gone, now you can loop Shaq with, like, this pallet or this window and then this pallet right here. The same thing where sometimes if it's a slightly bigger tile, like if you had that dumpster right here and you were looping that, you can even run over here and get into the front of Shaq this way with that pallet being in right there. And I medium vaulted and that dumpster would be big enough or it wouldn't even matter. But if you had a pallet right here, you'd want to use it this way and come over here and then connect it that way. And then if... There was a pallet or a window at the back of Shack. Same exact thing. It doesn't even matter which way you go. Because now you're just looping this, the front and the back. And whichever way he would catch up to you on, then you would jump this window, right? If you jump that window and then he pushes you around, then you're right back in Shack again. <laughs> looping the middle of Shack. And, and then he has to worry about that mind game. And if he, if he worries on that mind game and loses the 50-50, you come right back around and you push into this one. So basically, if there is any tile close enough to Shaq, it doubles how strong Shaq is. Because if you have another pallet, you essentially have two pallets at Shaq. And if you have another window, you have two windows at Shaq. Now, obviously, as I said, that's not always going to be the case. It's just the great majority of matches I played on Wrecker's Yard. There is always O penises elsewhere. But the great majority of matches I played on Wrecker's Yard, there is some strong tile right into Shaq. And the only time you wouldn't really want to do that is if it's Bubba or even Billy because they can one shot down and Billy can get back to the Shaq basement from pretty much anywhere on the map in a snap of the fingers. And Bubba is similar. You don't want to be in basement against a Bubba on this one. So if it was a Bubba, I just wouldn't even loop the middle area much in general unless you were just trying to have some fun. But that's the other thing too is is you're supposed to have fun playing DVD. So sometimes you want to do some unsafe loops just to see how they turn out. But on a map where it's complete RNG, the strongest loop will always also be RNG. So I do think that's fitting. It's just I don't want to be like RNG is the strong setup. Most of the time you want to start looking for your strong setup right here near Shack because like I said if there's a tile on any side of it you can use it to bolster Shack and make it even stronger and you can also use the time walking throughout the match to keep an eye open to sort of see what's going on that's why I talk about not just sitting on the gen right in the beginning if you spawn all the way out here in the back you can just use the time to walk across and sort of look for the three gen that the killer be guarding so say we spawn all the way back here right I don't want to just sit right on this gen right here because this is my three genus later on I was talking earlier about finding the whichever gen is closest to Shack. the one that we got was in Shack. that might end up being the one I was doing, but you want to, right in the beginning, walk around the map. It sort of gives you a chance to see which killer it is anyway, and you might run right into the killer, and then you get first chase, which is always the most exciting. Um, unless it's Oni, then you're like, no, I don't want to free drop pallets. But a lot of times you want to sort of scope out to see which pallet, or which generator you want to do first to avoid a 3-gen, and while you're scoping that out, that's when you want to keep an eye open for potentially insanely strong setups that you can find like the one we found earlier on this specific layout, which is on this side of Shack over here. This is absurdly strong setup. So in this case, this would not even be the tile closest to Shack, but the pallet could have spawned here, and then this would have made Shack stronger, and then this would have made this quite not as strong. But that's what I'm saying. Usually looking for the strongest loop on the map, start with Shack, especially if you don't have Windows opportunity, and then when you're looking for the right pallet to do, or right gen to do, just keep your eyes open for other potentially strong setups like this one that seemingly have no counterplay. Unless you're a specific killer like Huntress or something could throw over the cars, which that would make it counterplay. But at the same time, this is still a really strong setup. Bamboozle Wraith. It's not Bamboozle Wraith. Am I going to make it? No! 
if I would have reacted earlier. I want to do it again, though. I want to rematch. Oh, dang. He's the power, though. Oh, my God. Look at this fucking setup here. <laughs> Yeah, Valter. Valter Vite. What is Valter Vite? We're in here. Back to the other window. How <laughs> dumb this shit is. Let me get back to Shack window now. <laughs> this is why I'm doing this map guide next, too, because this shit is so stupid. I swear, like, on this map, there's literally always something super strong right by Shaq. Damn it. I was trying to get out of his way. Mm, damn it. I was trying to let him be the looped one. <laughs> I took a hit because of it. Oh god, I'm a fucking idiot. I have to run back to this. I got super lucky there. Once more. I'm about to be hindered though. Cause I gotta loop this thingy over here. Where the fuck is he? I couldn't see him at first cause of that bubble. Oh god, hindered! <laughs> it was a whole deal. Let's loop this empty fucking thing, right? I make this. What the fuck happened there? Oh, good shit. Thought I could get away with it again. It appears not. Let's do it again. Did you go this way or the other way? Interesting. I'm running back. Fuck it. <laughs> Hold W. I know how to do that. Me not want to use brain no more. What the fuck? Might as well look for Hatch, right? What's up, Archer? <laughs> I didn't realize we didn't have a single giant on. Oh, God. Lever sure he was going to try to mind game me. I need to hold back. This would suck. Yay! I'm pretty sure the fucking... No, I looped the wide way. There we go. I looped the wide way that time. Yes! <laughs> That's why I wanted to loop this thing, though, because it's hard for me to use this power around it. <laughs> He's like, stop with this shit. I have to. This is my only choice. Oh, 
Oh god. <laughs> that was the first time I was gonna switch. I thought he was gonna lose his power and I was gonna jump. Dang it. I should have thrown it down. Yeah, it worked. Let's go. Let's go. Oh my god, I got the fucking opinions. Look at this shit. Woo! I got one. Wow. I got the good RNG. Oh my god. This is a crazy fucking setup. Holy fuck, look at this. Oh my god. I got all the RNG I've been missing out from in like one game. Holy shit. Can I make this? She knows what I'm trying to do. Yes! Can I make this? Yes! Touch the gen. Yes! The o penis. Get the o penis. Get the o penis. Get the o penis. Do I make it this? Way? Yes! Oh god. And then greet it again. No! A <laughs> uh, generator. Got a skill check. Get a running vault. He's definitely got bamboozle. There's no way he doesn't. Now the question is, do I get curved here? Back over here, once more. Oh, I have this too. This is a fucking OP as shit. Does he have bambooski? He's gonna be able to curve here though. No! Oh! This is OP as shit. We found the OP ness. The setup is OP as F. Oh, he has saved the best for last. That's fucking terrible. No, I fucking stutter step. I think she had background player, right? Oh my god. Am I gonna make this vault? I can't run here. Fucking basement on Riker's yard is just asking to get, asking to get it. You're naughty. Can you vault it. Can you double vault it. No. This is too long. Can I make it? No. You definitely have fucking what's it called? Bamboozical. God damn it. <laughs> oh shit. I am getting tunneled. <laughs> I'm not getting tunneled. I mean, I might still be getting tunneled, but. So, overall. Talking about Wrecker's Yard, it's 
one big balanced map with a bunch of RNG that you're basically going to look around. Sometimes you don't get much stuff to connect to. Other times the map is like absurdly survivor sided because you just have O penises every time you turn around. But just a few things to think about with this map is since it does share the common tiles of all the other maps, you'll get more practice, not just on this map, but other practicing the other Auto Haven Wreckers or even the other maps in general that share common tiles in general will help you get better at maps like this. And then you can walk around and, and look and see where it's going to go. But really, Looping is mechanically easy. It's just knowing exactly where everything is on the map and how to work it. Because everything's going to work completely differently. And in different scenarios, it's going to work differently. It's just win 50-50s. But that's what I mean by looping. Essentially, it comes down to like playing cards where you know where everything is and you're going to play it this way and hope the killer doubles back or doesn't double back. And when that becomes the case, playing cards never gets old. I have 8,000 hours. And I just had a game the other day where we won so many 50-50s where I was laughing harder than I literally have in years. And this is 8,000 hours later. But when you flip a coin and you're calling heads over and over and over and over and it comes up heads 50 times in a row, that's one of the funniest things in the entire world. And it'll make me feel like I'm a straight-up child again, even though I have 8,000 hours in this game. And that's the reason why it's so much fun to keep looping and why it's, and why it's so relaxing because it's not mechanically challenging at all. Looping is one of the easiest things to do. The hardest thing on Survivor, in my opinion, is the actual teamwork. But once you know how everything works, you're not struggling and trying to learn and feel like I'm out of place and stuff. It literally just feels like you're playing cards and flipping coins. And eventually, you'll have one of those games where flipping the coin came up heads 50 times in a row and you'll be laughing your ass off just as hard as I was. But that's like the whole point of trying to make these looping guides in the first place is like, I wish we could as a group, like stop pretending looping is like this hard thing because we could, this would be one of the most newer player friendly games pvp games ever we're not playing halo where even if you have 10,000 hours in the game you still have to make sure you hit that precise headshot before they hit you with their precise headshot and if you shot a half a second too late you die and they get sniper and win the game or if you shot but slightly missed your shot they you die and they get sniper and they win the game it's not like that you're it, it's a team game so when you're actually doing the looping itself it, most of the time you know how the map works the killer's gonna know a lot of times how the map works and even if they don't they can see it coming up and obviously as killer whale said the being the chaser is a little bit more intuitive than being the chasee because if the chasee knows what they are doing then the chase is going to go on for a long time but if the chasee doesn't know what they're doing then the, the chaser is obviously going to make it pretty short for the most part and once you understand how all the maps work with that it all comes down to just winning 50 50s we're going to come over here and i'm going to greed this palette and it's either going to work and make me look like a juicer or a cracked you know skilled you know genius or whatever where in reality, it's really just like, me flip coin, call heads, heads happened. But then if it comes up tails, then you look like, bad, bad player. And it's like, no, like, a lot of times you can literally, like, have done everything well. Your pathing was great, made the decisions you wanted to, and it just got bit in the butt every time you came to a 50-50. That happens. And that's a lot of times what looping comes down to. But we got to stop pretending like it's some rocket science thing that you won't be able to do for 4,000 hours. It takes 4,000 hours because it takes too long to learn the maps. That's why I'm making these looping guys. Because I only, I feel like, 500 hours if you had in dbd i feel like you should be able to loop very well and that should with, with nowadays because it takes so long there's 38 maps soon to be and that includes all five bad hands as one that includes the the mcmillan estates two versions as one that includes the rpd as one and, and including all that there's 38 maps and there's like 35 killers soon to be so even though looping is easy how long would you have to play realistically before you played all the maps against all the killers? i don't even know if i've played all the maps against all the killers we don't ever see twins or uh, we see a little bit more hag now but you don't ever see twins i guarantee you i haven't played against twins in every single map and that's the only way to get experience in, in learning is trying stuff and failing you don't really learn from success you loop the killer for five gens like killer shack probably is because the killer did a bunch wrong and then you go loop that the exact same method against a killer that knows we're doing huh i got destroyed why didn't it work this and that's why you learn better off of making mistakes than anything else it just takes a sheer four thousand hours or more to make enough mistakes to learn how to actually loop but once you know how to loop and how the maps work survivor in my opinion is one of the easiest pvp games you could play looping specifically the the teamwork part is the hard part if you're playing comp against a really strong killer and trying to organize while all the pressure is going on that is what's hard but the looping part nobody and, and maybe not nobody but i feel like most of the people in comp are, aren't going to be like oh my god this and that it's all about the teamwork th th than it is anything else once you know the maps a lot of times and, and and controller if you can move around and look around and you're used to like just playing anything in third person like fall guys even and stuff like that then once you know the maps, then yes, I think Survivor is insanely easy. And if we and if we can get people into the game, we can even have 
Survivor be like one of the first PvP games anyone's ever played because I do think it can be that mechanically easy. It's not going to be something you have to work on your precise aim on for thousands of hours to still just get out BR'd. You know, it's literally just like, okay, now I'm going to try this. And even at 8,000 hours, it's the same exact 50-50 here as it would be as somebody that has this knowledge. And it could be their first game. All right, run up to this pellet and don't throw it and watch the killer respect, right? It could be me at 8,000 hours, and this could backfire. They don't respect, and I go down. And then you could have the same player against another killer with the same amount of hours. You get a player with one hour and another killer that had 2,000 hours. Let's say the last killer that didn't respect was 2,000 hours. And then you have Spire with one hour, runs up, doesn't throw the pallet. Exact same play. Was that some crazy mechanically challenging thing that a player with one hour can do? No. It just takes that long to learn the maps and learn like how DBD works. But that's why I wanted to make these guides. Just because I'm like, we can get way more people in playing Survivor. And then I've heard people be like, if everybody's seen these, then Survivors will get better and it'd be way sweatier. I'm like, but then we could balance the game better, maybe. <laughs> and not have to worry about like, oh, well, we can't have this perk because Nurse is going to be way too strong. So I do think looping is very easy. And once you you know the maps you won't be stressing and all it mainly comes down to once you know is literally winning a 50 50. <laughs> that's what most of looping comes down to but this map specifically is going to be one of the riskier maps that does require a bit more knowledge that's why i wanted to have as many rng examples as i possibly could without being like four hours worth of examples i think i have like two and a half worth of examples but with a map that everything's just rng i just wanted to get as many different setups against as many different killers as possible getting outplayed and playing well I just, but I also didn't want it to go on for, you know, four and a half hours straight of examples with no explanation. But once you know how the setups are and what to look for, and you'll start seeing stuff like, I got that setup last time, I know how to loop it, or, or not to make that mistake as last time. And that's how you overall improve on every single map and not just Wrecker's Yard. Oh god. I can't fucking go anywhere. Is there anything back here? There's nothing back. Okay, here we go. And now we get out. We're lucky as fuck here. Oh my fucking god. Now I'm looping around basement. <laughs> oh my god, he got auto-aimed. I didn't actually make that jump in time. He got auto-aimed by the video game. You know how we talk about that happening? But I was outplayed there. Double back. Yes! I'm jumping this one. I medium vaulted? What the fuck? I'm glad that he ran out, but that was ridiculous. Fucking medium vaulted there. Fung gave up on hug, yeah. Does he get me here? I think he does. Yay! We got the penis. He's blocked now, though. Can you jump it? Yes! I have nowhere to go. What the fuck? <laughs> All this shit's gone. No fucking. All right. We have the fun bus, <laughs> Leon. Don't throw the pallet, Leon. Don't throw it. Yes! Go walk around. I was gonna vault it, but. Jump this one, because we gain the distance. <laughs> yes! <laughs> he 
He double back? No, he didn't. I'm running the wrong way, though. I gotta, like, fucking turn this thing around. <laughs> 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 I'm trying to loop it once and jump the... I was gonna try to jump the window. Jump it. I think I'm fucked here. No! <laughs> we won like every single fucking 50 50 possible. <laughs> I know, oh, the Jumpsuit suit Jake. Wait, what map is this? Yes! This is totally guy. Totally <laughs> oh my god. That's hilarious. Oh yeah, okay. Can we sort of get from here to there? Oh, good shit. Double back. Yes! I want to run this thing over here. This guy's way better than Bubba than I am, by the way. I fucking can't back up at all. Yes! <laughs> He double back in? Fuck! He's gonna be right behind me. He, went he did double back in. What the fuck? Do I make this? Yes! Holy shit! I wanna run back to this thing again. This thing's hilarious. <laughs> We're literally just winning every 50 50. This shit's hilarious. Oh, fuck. Do I make this one? No, media ball. No, I'm bad. No, I'm bad. If I would have fast vaulted, <laughs> I'm bad. I want to loop this thing again. I need to double back is what I'm worried about. Is this gonna go for me? Oh fuck! I don't think you can make it. Let's go. Or a whole lap around again. No! I'm lucky as fuck, and then I went down. Okay. <laughs> I was like, I should be down. I'm lucky as fuck here. Boo! I <laughs> wanted. I wanted him to go forward. 
Mm, damn it. GG, Leon. <laughs> Dude, that was an awesome match. It was kind of actually a lot more fun than that. Oh, shit. He has no hook over there. <laughs> Oh my god. Run back to it! There it is again! This thing's hilarious. And there's no hook back here. <laughs> is he double back here? No, he didn't. Oh, he did! Fuck! I'm gonna run the long way, actually. This one. Double back. Run to the rock. Now back to the... Now back to the window. Let me make it back to Shaq. Oh! I don't know if I'll make Shaq window. Yes! <laughs> Where is it? Back to this thing! This thing's hilarious. No, but this is why solo queue is more fun. It's because gens don't get done as fast. I don't want to give it my head start, though. Oh, God. Free vault. Not in chase. Still not in chase, let's go. <laughs> Fuck, now we are. <laughs> what the fuck? Wow! <laughs> oh, he's being nice. <laughs> let's go. He's like, no, this is more fun. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Where do we go again? Where do we go this time? <laughs> no, medium vault. Ah, fuck. Let's go. Then jump this one. Uh, there's nothing I could loop back around to, though. Oh, fuck. This is where Meg is. Fuck! Search a chest! Where was that chest on the hill? <laughs> it's over there! That's what I was figuring. I figured he was just like, wait, let's go again. Looping tight. Let's go! I'm trying to loop as tight as possible. Oh, fuck! And I stubbed my toe. <laughs> I think he got me. No! He had me! That was really close. I don't want to leave. Oh, fuck. <laughs> there we go. He doubles back. No, I would have gotten hit there. Because I was even thinking, I was like, if he doubles back. Looping this way might be better, actually, for him. Oh, shit. No! All right, here we go. Oh, he's so close. He's just coming around. He has to be on controller. It's so fucking hard to do this on controller. But you explain why he got auto-aimed into the window on that first, uh, <laughs> first. There we go. Good shit.
Exactly. <laughs> Thank you, Bubba. Then he slaps with Noah, that would have been hilarious. Oh my god, MLT! He knows where I'm at. Um, hmm. Nice. <clears throat> You definitely have fucking what's it called? Bamboozical. God damn it. I don't know if I made it far enough. I did. Just barely. Fuck, there's nothing there though. There we go. I catch a few lucky breaks there. Boo! Oh shit. <laughs> um. Trying to, trying to sue Velveeta, dang. Yes. Because the package was miss. Um. Re representing how long it actually takes to cook. She wanted five million dollars. That's the other thing too. Class, class action lawsuits are usually more money than that. Oh my god, I actually got value out of that fucking tile. Would you look at that? It does happen. Oh, he's got the... This is bad. Protect me, tires. Alright. The only thing I get scared of if there's like, if there was a lot, would be that Automod wouldn't catch like very. That's funny. But if Automod wouldn't catch like very like offensive language maybe in another language, you know what I mean? That's like the only thing I could even be scared of and I'd be like, whoa, slow down. Because I'm trying to think of like very extreme situations where I would like have to ban somebody. No! I'm not going to throw it. Because to, to quote Keegan Key when he was on Hot Ones, I'm not a fucking pussy. <laughs> did that fake work? It did not. Dang, it didn't work. Uh-oh. Nobody's going for the unhook. And I'm fucking... Actually hindered right now. Oops. I'm hindered, dude. I'm fucking slow. I'm barrels. I'm too slow. <laughs> this is a pretty strong two tiles to have connected. Oh, dude.
<laughs> Damn it. I was trying to get out of his way. Mm, damn it. I was trying to let him be the looped one. <laughs> I took a hit because of it. Oh god, I'm a fucking idiot. I have to run back to this. I got super lucky there. Once more. There we go. I'm about to be hindered though. Cause I gotta loop this thingy over here. Where the fuck is he? I couldn't see him at first cause of that bubble. Oh god, hindered! <laughs> Played too long. Oh shit. The weird medium vault did kind of work though. Fuck the pallets down. And they're on hook. I can't even go down here either. Alright, I'm actually just gonna jump this and hold forward because I have to get away from Shaq. Because that guy's on the hook right there. Damn it! <laughs> Good shit. Playtime. Damn. I was hoping. Pallet still here. It is nice. Oh my god, that was so fucking close. And I'm hindered. Oh damn, I tried to greet it. I should have thrown it. <laughs> Oh my god, you're a hero, Jake. I'll return the favor. No! No, I'm not gonna make it to Jake! Now I will. No, Jake! No! No! It's right there! No! No! Run that way. Yeah! No! 
Ow! If I wasn't hindered, I would have made that. Temperature rise and okay. Go to the next level. My dumbass loop too tight, stub my toe. <laughs> Run to the pog log. It's not pog log. They messed up this fun bus, man. Is it like always like this now? Yay! Value! No! Oh. I stubbed my toe. I actually really like these cars against Huntress. They're a lot of fun. Because that thing's hard to throw over. But this is long. Maybe she can hit me here. That's what I was worried about. Just to get closer. Neener, neener, neener. <laughs> you guys ever see Attack on Titan when Kenny fucking said that? That's just hilarious. Yes! Got auto aimed to buy the video game. Yay! I mean, skill on my part. <laughs> Juke the hatchet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the big swings. <laughs> the dick slinger. Oh, God. No! <laughs> because like all the other competitive ones are, you know. They can hit me over this. Yeah. Oh shit, I fucked up. This is why paddles are amazing. <clears throat> I'm gonna have to hit him with the stall tech. Hopefully it works. I love doing that shit. Let's go. Can you get maybe two more loops out of it? Alright, never mind. My god. This is madness! I think she can hit that though. This is a terrible tile against Huntress. No! Oh, nice. That was lucky. No! No! Well, 
that was bad luck. Went from rotten fields to wrecker's yard. <laughs> it's not the best luck you could have. Probably should have thrown that down. Oh my god, I got the reverse slam. That's hilarious. Got her! <laughs> we got the wheels on the bus this time, huh? No, she doesn't want to chase me. I was about to run right back to that bus. Which one's breakdown? Oh my god. She did not fall for that whatsoever. <laughs> I was afraid to like greet it again because she didn't fall for it at all the first time. No, she got me. God damn it. I was trying to sucker her into hitting me because I had BT. Where did she go? Oh, she's still over there. <laughs> I wanted to fuck around with the little shell. It didn't work out. I can make another round, right? Yeah, I was hoping. Can I make it back to the fun bus? That'd be hilarious. Yes! I don't know if I make it a whole time again, though. On to the next one. No. Maybe she's right on me. No, she's not. I don't think I'm going to make it back to her, though. I'm sorry, Michaela. No.
There it is! So I guess that's how you run Spirit all match. Dang. Thought they'd commit. You gonna wear that outfit and be afraid of commitment? Come on now. It's just a tease. I do like that skin, but Spirit has too many good skins, so I have decided not to even want it. Any longer. No! Swing. Watch my skill. Unmind gameable window. Don't you love it? I do. I love it. What's not to love about that? I fucked up. Swing. Dang. Dang, it's blocked now. No, it's not. What the fuck? Ah! Thank you. I'm not into you like that, spirit. Why can't you just stay in the friend zone? Ah! Oh, boo. I got the fucking not running vault. I'm bad. Dang it. I can't run that way because the guy. I was giving up on hook. I could have ran that way. Boo! Oh, god damn it. Good shit. I know I'm a big old fucking mutt. Dang. Yes, my skill was definitely the reason that worked. Did she vault? I didn't think so. Dang it. I'm actually gonna get value out of that fucking window, that's hilarious. Dang, I thought you were a vaulter. Why you know a vaulter? A vaulting Walter. There's so many chainable tiles this time. My god. Will I make this? And then greet it? Yeah! Oh, damn. I over -greeted. I'm a greedy fucker. Oh, god. Yes. No. Where's she come from? Where is she going? And I'm holding forward, living my best life. Dang it, I should have thrown it down. Yeah, it worked! Let's go. Let's go! Oh my god, I got the fucking op penis. Look at this shit. Woo! I got one. Wow. I got the good RNG. Oh my god. This is a crazy fucking setup. Holy fuck. Look at this. 
Oh my god. I got all the RNG I've been missing out from in like one game. Holy shit. Yay! See what I mean? You just like take chances, and sometimes it works. That was like a weird 360 attempt. <laughs> Usually I aim my camera down. Which way do they play this? Alright, go the other way. No! See, a chance backfired. Dang. Speed. Oh god, I'm sorry. Oh, boo. Where's another one? Yay. Run around the back. Run to this one, actually. Me like a disc more. Yeah. Oh no! I don't know how that worked, but let's go with that, sure. No, I stubbed my toe! I actually think I was outplayed even if I didn't stub my toe, to be fair. But that's a good principle to live, just to live by in general. Dang. I was like, run forward with confidence. Do I make up? No, I don't. I misplayed. We were talking about the other day, like, you go to work, right? You can go to work and not say one word all day, and you'll have some people be like, hate working with that guy, he's so boring. Or you go to work and you talk to everybody, I hate working with that guy, he talks too much, you know what I mean? Like, literally, no matter who you are or what you do, somebody will not like you for it. There's no point in, like, l getting upset over someone doesn't like you. Who cares? I'm kind of like that with actors, where I'm like, this guy's a good actor, but I don't like his acting that much, you know? There's two I think about like that, Ed, Ed Norton and Mark Ruffalo. Both of them are great actors, but I just don't like their acting that much. But I know they're great actors, like I can tell. Mark Ruffalo, I've actually met in real life. Uh, when I worked at Maple on 42nd Street, he was at a, uh, a buyout party. That was cool. And he was very nice. Oh yeah, both Hulks! I never even thought about that until you just said that. That's hilarious. <laughs> That's fucking great. Oh my god, and I have another setup here. <laughs> now this is pod racing. Damn. I don't know where I'm going. Hmm. Do have a pallet anywhere? Or something that's not like a fucking LT wall? Oh, here we go. Here's a good one. No! God damn it. He, he got me here. No! It's not Noed.
Oh, this pallet's down. No! Body block, body block. Yes! <laughs> Holy shit, Fang is amazing. Nice one. Super Lord with the whipsicle. Oh, boo. <laughs> oh, fuck. Damn it. You can go hit yourself. Three for the swing. Yay. Got him. I thought he was going to go for the whip. I wanted to watch him nay nay. Oh damn, he knows the ways of the... of the drag the mouse. He even got me with the switch of direction. Oh god. <laughs> well, at least we know he's gonna M1, right? No! This is terrible. I'm still gonna fucking read the shit out of this ballot. I do not care. Ready for this pallet green? Watch this. Yes! Are he gonna get me though? Damn, good shit. I should run. My only job now is to hold forward and get away from the basement. Make it to the fun bus, maybe? Damn it. I was hoping I could make that. Now I can pre drop absolutely fucking everything. Damn. I was hoping to take his whip out. To the fun bus. I don't think I make it though. No, the zombie is still fucking here. Open it, open it, open it, open it, open it. Open it, bro, open the door. No. Oh, 
Oh, he has saved the best for last. That's fucking terrible. No, I fucking stutter step. Oh, fuck. There's no pallet there. I don't think I make this. That was dumb as hell. I should have thrown that. Or looped the small side of it. I don't know what the fuck that was. No! Bamboozle Wraith? It's not Bamboozle Wraith. Am I gonna make it? No! If I would have reacted earlier. I wanna do it again though. I wanna rematch. Oh dang, he's the power though. Oh my god, look at this fucking setup here. <laughs> yeah, Valter. Valter Vite. What was Valter Vite? We're in here, back to the other window. <laughs> How dumb this shit is. Let me get back to Shack window now. This is why I'm doing this map guide next, too, because this shit is so stupid. <laughs> I swear, like, on this map, there's literally always something super strong right by Shaq. It can still be. All right, let me get off. Dude, that guy got hosed. Let me double back. He got auto aimed into the fucking generator, dude. That sucks. There's no pallet. <laughs> yes, there is. Yes! That one pallet greed, I would have gotten downed otherwise. All right. Can I make this here? Dang it. Uh, there's an achievement called Power Moose, so I'm the number one, uh, I can just show you. I don't know how many I have. <laughs> Maybe I will pull it up. I haven't pulled it up in a while. Like, out of their base once. They just sat there. And then we were, like, stuck, because we either, like, try to wait them out. I'm dead here, actually. We tried to wait them out, and we literally just, like... Lost patience. We're like, all right, these guys won.
<laughs> oh god. Yeah, he got me now. No, he didn't. No. I tried reverse psychology. Does he have the extra add on? I'm fucked, by the way. Yes! Oh. Damn it! Like, which way is he coming from? This is bait. I have nowhere to go. No! Do I make the window? I, th I do. Yeesh. God damn it. No! <laughs> no! No! Oh, I have this too. This is a fucking OP as shit. Does he have bamboo ski? He's gonna be able to curve here though. No! Oh! This is OP as shit. We found the OPness. The setup is OP is F. Look at that. Holy F. Look at that whole setup. I'm kind of fooked here. Actually. Yay! Wait. I'll give him away. <laughs> Yay! He let us have hatch. And I'm fucked. I uh, was lucky here. He can has curve this. Yay, we got the jukes. <clears throat> what tile is this here? The fucking fuck is this tile? Oh, I know which tile this is. Oh, it's, it's that tile? No, of course they ran into it. It was Shadow Step.
He can't see me, can he? Can I bust him out, please? What the fuck? It's like never done that before. It like gave me a collective bust out. Did you see that? I've like never seen that. You know what I mean by a collective bust out? Where it like... It stopped, usually it resets, right? I don't play enough Ghostface though, maybe it doesn't. Ghostface I kind of try not to play. Let's go. Strike two! Yeah, okay, third strike. No! Oh! <laughs> Damn it. And hold W. No! I have to hope this greed works. I stubbed my toe. Big Sag, I stubbed my toe and skill issued it. This is bad. I didn't fucking... I'm bad, bruh. I'm not gonna make it again, either. Hey, thank you. Did he double back here? No, he didn't. Interesting. Man, game yourself, please. Yay! Just like that. Can I make this? Yay! I can! Let's go. Well, I got very lucky. I won a bunch of 50-50s there. We got an O-penis right here, too. This is what I was trying to get back to. Closed. There he is. Oh my god, bro, really? Bruh, you should have been exposed out or broken out. I got hosed on that one. No! Wait, where is that old penis at? He's gonna sit here and follow me over and over. Ow, fuck. Yeah, that's what I thought, son. And exposed. There's nothing else for me here, though. Because I can't find the fucking O penis again. Oh my god, that's hilarious. I feel like I should have got hit there, though, I'll be honest. No! Oh, the has gone! Boo! I don't want to take that much pressure, though. <laughs> I don't want to give her a free down. Too early in the game for that. I'm gonna give her a free down by just looping bed. Read the pallet. Ha! <laughs> Hold forward. I'll make the window, right? Oh, yeah! Oh shit, this is bad. I'm going down. Good shit. And still, same with not spending any blood points. I was like, well, if I don't need to buy any new perks. That person gave up on hook. We have two gens done. I don't know what artist was doing there. <laughs> Good shit, she can see me on this. I'm sorry, Fang, I did not mean to. Nothing for me here now. <laughs> 
No, that's so sad. Cause I'm pretty much fucked here. Why didn't she set a bird? I would have been fucked there. Now I can drop this. I have no pallet here though. I do. Damn it. No. I should have thrown that crap down. Juke the window, juke the window, juke the really big window. And I'll juke it every time now, cause it worked once and I'm gone. Hold forward, hold forward, loop the truck and juke the bird. Throw the pallet down, juke it, turn around, run around and juke it one more time. No! <laughs> she's gonna get a hit on me here. <laughs> no, she's not. Let's go. Alright, well that didn't work. Good shot. Oh shit. No! She didn't go for it. Damn, I thought that was actually a pal there. I'm kind of fucked here. I'm trying to find like a decent setup. <laughs> I'm not gonna find one. That's funny. Yay, we got him with the fake out. Now we can find the fun bus. Let's go. Juke the window. Oh god. <laughs> That's close. <clears throat> Kind of fucked here. <laughs> <laughs> no! Holy 
shit. I didn't even realize Nurse could blink that far in one blink. No! Infectious Sprite. Infectious Sprite. <laughs> you messed up! Ha ha! Lol. You messed up again! Ha ha! Lol. <laughs> Oh shit. I wasn't teabagging. Oh damn. <laughs> it didn't work. Yes! Oh my god, they didn't even... <laughs> Nobody ever recovers on the ground anymore, do they? Bernard's... Wait, F. Sam's... Fucking hate playing against another student. I know, dude. I can't. It's the only killer I don't like playing against. Looks <laughs> like I'm playing fucking duck hunt, just waiting for them to mess up. Hey, Ben, though, man. You just been playing DBD? You play the new Pokemon? <clears throat> Pell agreed, oh god. If I was playing male survivor, I would have not gotten hit in there. That's what I thought. What the fuck is this tile, isn't this? Oh no, it's the wrong way. The window's on that side. Boo. I might be able to throw that down actually, but I think she had background player, right? Oh my god. Am I gonna make this vault? I can't run here. Fucking basement on Riker's yard is just asking to get asking to get it. Oh my god, I got the broken bus. Boo. Can I make it? The broken bus. <laughs> That was funny. I haven't seen him do anything but play Blight, though. There's nothing wrong with that, but I don't think I've ever seen him play Survivor or another killer besides Blight. Now that I think about it. 
Oh god, there's no pallet there, I just remembered. Go run the semi-truck! Oh yeah, he only plays Blight. I don't know how that doesn't get boring, I'll be honest. Just like steamrolling survivors every game with the... God damn it, I slow vaulted like a BK! Ooh, that was like his daft still on? Back to the... The bad bus. I call this the bad bus, but it's really fun. I make it? Yes! Ah! <laughs> so close. Dang. You were supposed to swing. Damn it. <laughs> oh god, here comes LT wall action. Oh god! Damn it! <laughs> He's patient. <laughs> That'd be amazing. That was weird. Oh, good shit. Oh, God. It didn't help. He has the bloodlust of a fucking mate. No, he doesn't! He went the other way! I thought he was gonna bloodlust me. Yes! We win the first mind game. She's gonna get a hit here, damn it. Slower. I stuck. What the fuck? So, she got auto aimed into the wall. The game paid me back. Oh god, here we go. Greed the pallet, right? No, it didn't work. Can I make this? She knows what I'm trying to do. Yes. Can I make this? Yes. Touch the gen. Yes! The O penis! Get the O penis, get the O penis, get the O penis, do I make it this way? Yes! Oh god. And then greet it again. Ah! No! <laughs> This is a follow, mate. Oh. Damn it. I wanted her to try to infect me. And she didn't. 
damage. Shoot, that time. Good stuff. That thing. I need to get away from there, though. It's too close to... Let's go. Oh, good shit. She got me here. No! I'm not warm yet. Oh, fuck. God damn it. Well, it worked for a second. Hold W. I'm gonna run the short side. Go for it. No, she still goes for M1. God damn it. This sucks. Oh god, I stubbed my toe. No, that's what I'm talking about in the warm up game. Sucks. That's why I wear jumpsuit Jake in the warm up games too, though. I'll make scratch marks, I don't give a fuck. I need to get better at looping. Oh god. No, there's no head! <laughs> I saw it. <laughs> can I get hit? <laughs> I was like, can I get hit by this? I want to see. Can I get hit by this? That'd be hilarious. Yeah, that's hilarious as fuck. I should be able to get hit, right? If I'm like right against this. No! <laughs> Did I move over this way? Because of the thing? Do it! I want to see if I can get hit. Wait, if I stand right here, he'll go over me though, right? <laughs> oh my god, he does go over me. What the fuck? <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> Can you do that in like all of them? <laughs> I'm not touching a gem in this game. This shit's funny. He's trying to jump from there. <laughs> oh my god, where did he land? He landed right there! That's funny. There's just memeing around. Oh god. Loop the tire. Can he hit me from there? I don't think he can hit me from there. I think the hitbox is too low. I don't think Hunters can hit me over this either. <laughs> I'm glad we got Chucky too, because I thought we would never get Chucky since we had Victor. Then run up and kick him. <laughs> what did he run into? There we go. <laughs> I'm glad Victor can still jump. Didn't they stop demo from being able to do random shit like this? Or just the intense stuff? Yeah, I love going against Chucky. Yeah. You know what's funny? Here's uh, what I secretly thought why everyone said they hated to go against Chucky so much. Obviously, we're seeing a lot of Chucky, but also paid for this got nerfed. <laughs> so it's like, I think uh, that's why everybody hates going against Chucky. <laughs> Obviously, not everybody was using paid for this, but <laughs> this guy's definitely on mouse and keyboard because <laughs> he can't like walk slow. <laughs> Michaela's on a boon. <laughs> Now this is the warm-up game I was <laughs> I was hoping for. We ended up getting the warm-up. <laughs> we're just playing Ring Around the Rosy. <laughs> Michaela's doing what I try to do with Nice Killer. Search chest and uh, do Dull Totem. <laughs> Holy shit. Got jumped on from that far. I want to walk a little bit so the... It's like right here. But I still can't see it. <laughs> There's a med kit, a regular toolbox, a flashlight, a purple flashlight, and yeah. 
How many items is that? Where's the key? I literally can't see it on the ground. It's here, though. It should be, like, right behind him. It should be, like, right here. I don't see it on the ground, though. Like, what the F? It should literally be right there. Oh, God. It's giving me a thingy again. What the F? Why did they die on the thing? Wait, where'd it go? Where is that key? <laughs> I literally can't find. It's not over here. <laughs> I cannot see it on the ground. Boredom is death. <laughs> I just realized that we were just like sitting here looking at a tree. I don't want to pick it up either because I could just pick it up and put it back down and then I'd see it. But I don't want to do that either. Aw. Now we got some real family time. See, even with their light, they had a red stain there and I still couldn't find the key. Bruh, where is this key on the ground? Then you like hate when it's gone. And then Morid! That'd be hilarious. Wait, can I crawl super slow? Cousin! No! <laughs> that was funny. You know, being super nice. Had took pity on the warm-up game. 